Personal trainers, stop training people and start teaching them. You need to guide them. Get them to the point where they could do this on their own. Now, here's the interesting part about that. You'll become more successful if you do this properly. Just stop taking them through workouts. Teach them so they learn. This was a huge shift. You got to be for the me as a oracle. <laughs> the what? <laughs> the oracle. The oracle. <laughs> yeah, you're the, the person of wisdom that they come back to. Yeah. I, you know, I remember as an early trainer, it was like, you know, oh, I'll just tell you what to do and then you just do it. And then eventually I started figuring out like, if I really find ways of teaching my clients and showing them why we do what we do and why things work the way they do and why you shouldn't do it this way, not only were they more likely to follow my advice, but they would develop a better relationship with it. And the irony is it, it, of that is they stayed with me longer because I think a lot of trainers are afraid of like teaching clients because they're like, well, they're not going to need me anymore. Mm -hmm. the, the the truth is when you if you ever get a client to the point where they don't need you anymore, they'll probably stay with you longer. Which is interesting. Do you think that's what it is? I think so. And I also, the other part of it is I think they don't, they don't realize that they can, they should be, you know, it's like clients who learn how to exercise, who learn why they do what they do. They just do so much better. Maybe trainers don't realize that. Though. Yeah. I don't, I think it's more of that. Yeah. I think, yeah. Cause I, at least I, when I think back to like, we all were this way as trainers, you know? And I do remember having that scarcity mindset of afraid of losing them. But mm -hmm. I also think that I was just I, naive. I didn't know better. I just thought it was, it was always like the X's and O's. It was, yeah. oh, if they ate these macros, yeah. they did these exercises and I could, I just motivated them to complete it. And most people don't complete it and fail. And so my job was to inspire them to get through it. And that was most of my job. And so, and then most people still failed and you just kept recycle, repeat, recycle, yeah. repeat, not realizing, I think the, the psychological piece, right? The behavioral yeah. piece that you, after years of experience, you start to realize like, oh, that matters a lot. Maybe yeah. even more so than the other stuff. I think it's rare for like a new trainer to to really be able to um, look at it long-term like that. I think it's really, it's like a short-term view versus long-term view uh, with like how to guide your, your clients. So initially it's like, like you said, it's all the X's and O's. It's like, can I get them to uh, subscribe to eating these types of foods and to just like work, do these types of exercises. And that's like, as far as your like mentality goes. Dude, it's so funny. You say that <clears throat> this morning I was talking to Kyle and I won't put the business on blast. That's helping him or going through this stuff right now, but you guys know that we've had him go out and sign up for courses and try yeah. different things. And it's interesting, probably why this is and why this is perpetuated in the space is because you've got companies that are teaching trainers, like kind of this model and philosophy. And like, I was talking to him, I'm like, Hey, what are you, how, what are you liking? What are you not liking? He's like, ah, oh. well, he goes, I can see what they're building me up to. Like the, one of the things they do to make sure that you recoup the money that you've invested in them is they build to the, towards this big launch, you know, and it's, and it's all around hype and motivation, right? It's like, get your, your following hyped up about this challenge or this event, mm. and you're going to sell all these, these programs. Such an all, unsustainable. It's so unsustainable. It's, it, and it's funny because the, obviously they're teaching from the business perspective, but you wonder why that's also why the trainers, I think coach and teach this way is that they have that same mentality. And so it's, it's a, it's a failing model, not only for helping your clients, but also for business. And yet this is the philosophy. And again, scarcity, right? The, the, the idea of the business teaching these guys, this is that, well, we want to make sure that they at least make their money back that they spent on us. They spent, mm. you know, eight grand. Yeah. And then after that, who cares if he's got a business or not, because they can, at least we know that, Hey, they spent $10,000 on us. We're going to show him how he can make $10,000. We can guarantee that by running this, mm. you know, launch or this thing that we're going to do. And then after that, if he's a great trainer, he'll make it. If he doesn't, who cares? Because we've already we've already recouped what he's yeah. invested. And it's so built around. It's like, that's not how you build a sustainable business. No, I remember thinking as a trainer that the ideal client would be one who just did what I told them. Remember thinking that? Yeah. Like, if I just oh, got to yeah. just follow what I say, and then you'll <laughs> it'll be great. But that is not an ideal client. First of all, that doesn't exist. People will hire you and then do what you tell them. But eventually, if they don't understand why and they're not doing it for the right reasons, um, then they'll stop. They'll just stop doing it. The, the, the real successful model is getting a client to trust you. That's important. How do you do that? Well, you build vulnerability and honesty and you, you set the expectations realistically. You don't you know, oversell or lie or any of that stuff. But then it's about teaching them so that they know why they're doing what they're doing. So they become educated. Not only do they understand, but then they value it 
because then they'll want to continue it. It's not about losing 30 pounds. It's about how do we get you in a place where this doesn't ever come back? And, and, and if I were to be gone, that you would have the tools that would allow you to maintain this. And it, again, this is the successful model. Like I, I, I had a lot of pride that my clients, the ones that were with me for a long time, knew more than many, if not most, like new trainers. And it would be funny because they'd go to work out at gyms with their friends or whatever, and they'd come back and be like, oh my God, I saw this trainer doing this. I saw this trainer doing that. And I heard a trainer talking about this. And it's really crazy how much misinformation is out there. And it's like, well, I, you know, number one, it made me kind of sad. Like, well, I hope trainers get better. But number two, I felt proud because I was able to educate them. Plus they have to navigate. People yeah. have to navigate the world and navigate the diet industry and the supplement industry. And you need to equip your clients, not just to do what you tell them, but to know why, why you do what you do. If you do that, man, you've got clients for life. Yeah. You know, and that's, that was always the irony was the most educated clients that you built up to that were the ones that were the lifers, the ones that kept totally. coming back. And, and cause you know, they feed off that knowledge and they feed off the fact that, you know, you're, you're providing them tools that they're applying. It's working. And, uh, it's, and then again, they'll, they'll get their family involved or whoever they give you referrals. There's so much more business you receive as a result of like really, you know, pouring that into your client and not like just trying to get to a result. Can you communicate what that sounds like? Like, can you remember <clears throat> like how that conversation switched? Like, Oh, it was this way. Like it was, I used to talk to my clients like this when I first started where it was like around five more, come on, you got this. Yeah. You could, like it was more around that, right? Counting reps, pushing them, getting hyped. And then when did it, when did it switch over to the teaching and how does that sound different from the, the client? It was an evolution from explaining when the questions would arise. Cause that's the first thing that happens, right? Like, well, why, why are you making me stop now? I feel like I could do four more reps and then I'll explain or whatever. Yeah. It, it was an evolution from there to, telling them before the question would pop up. So like, look, we're going to do this yeah. set right here. I'm going to tell you to stop. You're going to feel like you could probably do five yeah, more. Forecasting. Uh -huh. But here's why we do it this way. Yeah, and then I'll explain kind of what's happening yeah. in their body. Because if you tell them before it happens, people, uh, well, they, first off, you really come across as what you're talking about because they experience it. Like, okay, I'm going to tell you to eat in this particular way. Here's what's going to happen. You're going to feel like you can't eat anymore. Eating that much protein is very challenging. You're going to feel like, uh, you know, you're going to want to do this. You're going to want to do that. Here's why you don't want to do those things. Or like my favorite one was I get a new client. I'd say, okay, we're going to, this is how it's going to work. We're going to do a set. We're going to rest for about two minutes. You're going to feel ready 30 seconds later, mm -hmm. but that doesn't mean that we're training the right way. I, I'm not giving you a rest period because you need to rest because you can't do another set. I'm giving you a rest period so we can replenish ATP, train the proper ad adaptation signals. What does that mean? And we talk about it. And then we would do it. That, that yeah. was the evolution. Yeah. For me, like part of it was, I, I guess there's a transitional period where I was, the, okay, oh, I got to educate them right out of the gates and I got to tell them what I, why we're doing all this in the workout. And so I like would prescribe this workout ahead of time, have it all written out, like, or, or whether it's a diet plan, I'm kind of going through and I'm trying to educate. And then it's just like, you realize none of that sticks. And, and literally I have to figure out like where they're at when they come into the gym. Yeah. And so I have to like ask them very specific questions and find out like where their energy's at. Uh, they get sleep, like, you know, how much stress are, are, are they in right now with work and, and, you know, the relationships and, you know, what, what, what do they tend to grab at lunch? You know, what, what do they tend to do this? So, like you ask them like real specific questions about like what's happening right now. And then I'm able to steer them a lot more effectively. You know, it's funny about what you're both are saying. You know what it sounds a lot like? Like parenting. Oh, yeah. <laughs> exactly. I'm it's serious. All communication. Yeah, it's, I know. And, it's, and it's, it's funny because we talked, I think the other day about how, like I, we all talk about how we, when our kids ask stuff like that, you don't just ever say like, because I told you, you so, yeah. you mm -hmm. know, or because dad said so. Yeah. Like, I always want to be able to, to communicate to my son why he can't do this or why I'm telling him no. And like, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to explain it. Not because I feel like I need to give my son a reason more so, so I could educate him on the process of like, why this is going to make you a better human. Why, why daddy doesn't just let you stay up till, you know, 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock mm -hmm. at night and eat candy at nine o'clock after dinner. Like, why do we do these things versus just saying, because I said so it's so similar to the same, you know, trajectory that you followed as a, as a good coach and trainer. You first start off, it's like, this is what it takes to get loose body fat. You have to follow these macros. Yeah. You need to just do what I say and I'm going to motivate you. And then it turns into this, like explaining every detail along the way. And then even further, it's like 
figuring out where they're at and meeting them. It's not like, okay, I might've had this plan to teach nutrition and teach like program design. It's like, oh shit, they're not even ready for that. Like right. where this person is at, they're still trying to even justify why the fuck am I here? Yeah. Yeah. Why am I even coming to this thing? My doctor told me I need yeah, to be it's here. It's timing. Yeah. And so what, where, where can I, where can I show them like that part first and then explain the why behind everything that we're doing? Just hearing you both talk about, it, I'm like, oh my god, it sounds so much of uh, your philosophy around parenting. Yeah, it's a, it's a, one, like one of the hallmarks of a really, like a truly <laughs> successful good trainer is whether or not clients continue to exercise properly after the trainer is no longer training them. If they continue on this lifestyle, if they've if they've created permanent or helped encourage these permanent changes, that's the real hallmark of a successful trainer. Not whether or not your clients get results in 30 days, 60 days or whatever, um, and then fall off. That's, that's easy. Everybody does that. But if right. you do it right, it's like, you know, um, you know, it's funny you brought up parenting. Uh, Jessica had this, she said this quote to me that stuck with me a long time ago, where she said, your kids are going to be adults for a lot longer than their kids. And so I thought about that. It's like, you know, the hard times that you have mm. with your kids where you're like struggling with them. It's like, you know, how are they going to look back on this as an adult? You know, maybe now when they're 12, they're, you know, whatever, annoyed that dad did this or whatever. Yeah. But when they're 30, 35, 40, 40, whatever, they'll look back and be like, oh man, I'm glad. I'm glad you taught me that way because, you know, because you're an adult for a lot longer than yeah, you're yeah. a kid, yeah, yeah. you know, and it sticks with you. Yeah. It sticks with you. I mean, I've that stat of the amount of days that we'll spend with our kids after 18 compared yeah. to the first 18, it always sticks yeah. with me. I mean, I think that's crazy to think that the first 18 years, you're going to spend most of the time you'll ever spend yeah. with them. Today's giveaway on YouTube is Maps Aesthetic. To enter to win, leave a comment below this video in the first 24 hours that we drop it. Subscribe to this channel and turn on notifications. If you win, we'll let you know in the comments section. Also, this month's sale is Maps Anabolic, half off, and Maps Anabolic Advanced, also half off. If you're interested, just click on the link at the top of the description below. All right, back to the show. I had a challenging uh, conversation with my with my aunt uh, over the weekend. We had, so my my brother we baptized my nephew, which is great honor. It's really awesome. My my brother's just a, such a great dad. But we're up there, and my family has a family culture plus the culture where um, and you when you grow up with this, it's just how things are. And then you get older, and you go, wait a minute, maybe we should do this a little different. But the way things are yeah. is if a little ki like little kids, if they're asked to give someone a kiss, they're supposed to give them a kiss. It's, it's, it's respect. That's yeah. how we, that's how it's, it's sold. Right. No, it's respectful. It's respectful. And I never challenged that until relatively recently. And then, you know, you look at it now and Jessica helps me with this. I look at it now and I go, you know, telling my three-year-old they have to kiss a person because they're asking them or because they're making them feel guilty or because they're offering them a cookie that's not really a good, you know, <laughs> like when you, un it. when you yeah. unpack it like that, it sounds really bad. Well, here's I'm, I'm, a while. This was a struggle for me for a long time because it makes me feel like I'm denying my own arm. You know what I mean? Cause it's my cult. It's what I grew up with. Yeah. But I remember, you know, Jessica made the point. She goes, uh, number one, if anybody ever <clears throat> takes advantage of a kid, it's almost always someone they know. And it's almost always cause the kid feels like they have to listen, obey, or because they were guilted or given gifts sure. like exactly the ways that people in my family like to convince kids sure so my family has a big problem with this right <clears throat> so when they come up to give him a kiss and my son says no oh come on oh you make me sad oh i'll give you a dollar or i'll give you this or whatever yeah so i'm starting to really stand my ground and i'm like no you don't and i tell him in front of them you don't have to kiss them if you don't want to so we had a conversation oh, I, got a, I got a message <laughs> <laughs> i got a message from my aunt we're going back and forth and i said you know he's gonna be i said right now he's three so he has to learn that above and beyond whether or not an adult tells him respect or whatever, that if he feels uncomfortable, that he has to feel confident enough to say no. Sure. Now, as you get older, you know, you understand, you know, you greet people or whatever, but it, especially at this age, like he needs to learn, he can say no to a kiss or a hug. Mm -hmm. So I'm having this conversation, man. I think she understood, but it's just like a <laughs> ongoing What did she, thing. did she end yeah, up like texting you afterwards? Like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And we're going back and forth. And I explained it to her. I said, you know, the, the here's the irony. They make it so anxious and awkward that it only, um, my son only asserts himself more. Yeah. yeah. yeah it's yeah, like, if yeah. you guys just relaxed, if I just said, yeah. if he said, no, I don't want to kiss you. And you're like, no problem, buddy. He's a and little you left rebel it, in the making. Yeah. yeah. And if you left it, yeah, yeah. then mm -hmm. he, he tends to like relax and come around. But yeah. if you push it, 
then he's going to keep pulling back and I'm going to let him so your pull son. back. So yeah. your son. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. That's but I, I was raised like, no, you kiss people when they say, kiss <laughs> yeah. and if you think about you that, you clean like, your plate, you eat every last yeah, morsel. Dude, I'm like, yeah. that isn't good. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I <laughs> felt like that, that was the challenge I went through with the, the candy, right? Like the, everybody wants to reward the kid with candy. It's like their, their, their bribery tool. Yeah. It's like how they get get uh -oh. him to do whatever they want him to do, and I'm yeah. just like, no, mm -hmm. I don't want him to like. And boy, getting the family to like understand that, like, it's listen, it's I'm not saying. And I remember the defense was always like, oh my, he's only gonna rebel when he gets older, and he's gonna eat all the candy in the world because you <laughs> tell him. I'm like, no, that's he's, not the point. I'm a, I, that's not true. I'm like, he's gonna have all those things. I'm not denying him that for the rest of his life. He's just at a, such a young age right now. I don't want to condition him that oh when someone offers you candy you do whatever they tell them to do or like yeah. you do these behaviors for those things it's like if you want that relationship with my son go build it you know go fucking play with him go teach him numbers go go do puzzles with him go play on the oh, playground no, i want to easily i want to give him candy it's yeah <laughs> it's like such a cheap shortcut it's like relax yeah. dude he, he'll have an opportunity to have an ice cream cone with him i'm not going to deny that when he's at a certain age but like yeah. right now it's not the it's time. one of the hardest things though because uh you know people are raised a particular way they grow up in their family culture mm -hmm. it, it becomes so much a part of who you are that challenging it is like what do you mean yeah. i grew up fine it's like that's not the point and you kind of did. <laughs> but, yeah. <laughs> but, According to you. Yeah, yeah. No, I mean, that's not right. I'm, I'm making jokes, but you know, like the cleaning, cleaning up your plate type of deal. Like, yeah. no, you have to finish. Yeah, I was big food. in my family. Yeah. Like, like, what are you teaching? Like, we, we don't live in a world with scarcity. Now I understand if it was a thousand years ago, like, yeah, yeah listen, I just killed this animal. I don't know if I'll be able to kill one another, yeah. you know, another week oh, or yeah. two. Nothing with the waste. But yeah. but now it's I mean, when I was a kid, literally we would be at my grandma's house and they we'd all have food put in front of us. And my grandma will come out and be like, all right, whoever eats first, finishes their plate first gets $5. Like, <laughs> like encouraging us to stuff our faces. Yeah. Or they put a timer. Oh, yeah. You got five minutes. Bribery was huge. Yeah. I'm with like, the boomers. Oh my God. Yeah. Oh. I don't know. That must have been like their MO. Yeah. And yeah. you also you also want kids to do things. And this takes longer. This is why I, I get why it's a struggle for people. You want kids to learn to do things from their own internal motivation, right? Mm -hmm. Like, for example, people have said this before, but I think it's a good point. You don't want your kid to not steal because they're afraid of getting caught or because they want to impress their parent. Mm -hmm. they, you want them to not steal because it's wrong. Right. But that takes longer to teach because it's easy to get a kid to do what you want through fear, fear or yeah. to just make you make you uh, make mom and dad happy. Right. But it, so it takes longer to get them to like kind of figure it out themselves and go, no, this is actually the right way. Yeah. It just takes longer, I think, is why why people don't do it that way. But no, that's what it is. Yeah, because it's because it's like I know what they're doing. They're doing it because they want this bond and relationship with them. And obviously, you don't need candy to build a bond and relationship yeah. with the kid. But the other way takes longer. Mm -hmm. The other way is like, oh, uh -huh. you're gonna have you're gonna have to eat warm up to him, and then yeah. do the thing, play with the things that he wants to play with, and you go through the phases of he's into hanging out with you, then he's not into hanging out with. You. It just takes time. Versus, you know, if you pull out that candy and like, hey, you want a sucker. Yeah. He's going to say yes every single time. And so it's just a, sh it's a shortcut. Is it is. It yeah. is. And then you revisit your own. Like my family has no boundaries, bro. Like, none. <laughs> you know, like still to this day, if, if any of my men. I want, I think I want, I want your family and, and Katrina's family. They would get of, along great. All of us to all just. I think they'd all, oh, they'd man. all be like, oh, we're the same. At least yeah. your family's party, dude. Yeah. What, what, what do you mean? Oh, you had the, you had the 50th anniversary <laughs> this weekend. Bro. Just to give a speech to a hundred people. Yes. Oh, you had to do a speech? No, no. Actually you had to entertain them all. Yeah. It wasn't just a speech. Whoa, I didn't know this. Like, it was like, yeah. So, and I, I didn't know it either. I just, <laughs> I just like walked into it. Uh, so, yeah, dude. So it was my parents' fiftieth anniversary, which is a big deal. Like, and I knew this was coming uh, a couple months ago. Like that, my mom wanted to put this together, and I was like, anything I could do to help, and you know, uh, you know, trying to like provide money to buy stuff to get like a DJ and like all this and film it and like make it kind of like a, a big deal. Um, and so like she did, she got a, a DJ, um, and invited like 150 people. And I'm like, wow, you know, 150 people, <laughs> that's like legit. Like I don't know 150 people I would invite, you know, like that's a lot. And a hundred people like showed up. Wow. And it, it, so just to give you some perspective, it was like the, the age range was around like 70 to 90, like Whoa. no joke. Like there was, <laughs> there was a lot of, um, sounds like a good time. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Now add, now add a few of these other elements. It was a costume party. No. What kind of, why? Cost, what kind of costume? You party? might ask. I don't know. Um, yeah. What kind, what's the theme? No theme. 
<laughs> wait, 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 any costume. Wait, wait. They put the <laughs> <laughs> any costume. You just put a costume on and you come and you celebrate my parents' fiftieth. That was really the, the instructions. Yes. What kind of? Hold on. What Bro, kind of costumes did, did people wear? You had like you had like cowboys there. You had like you had this one guy <laughs> who was like a, in a sheriff's outfit. I. Okay, and and okay, this is me pre speech and everything, and I like I wrote all this stuff down. Like, so the the premise for me to go up there was like my dad was like, you know, have fun with it, you know, roast us even a little bit, and you know, like like tell some stories, make it fun. And I'm like, okay, <laughs> he's like coaching you on how. To yeah, talk I'll like to I'll today. figure out. No, the whole thing was a big like they already had a vision for this thing that nobody knew. You know what I mean? And it was like my mom is very much like that. We'll have like this crazy vision for something. <laughs> And like nobody is on board, <laughs> but like you find out day of, like this is what you're doing. I'm like, oh, this is what I'm doing. And even my cousin, who uh, was like a sister of me, she lived with us for a while. Like she was there, and like she turned into like like a a, a D like she did the DJ's job because he didn't want to like talk on the mic at all. So she was like emceeing like the whole thing. <laughs> she didn't find out about that till day of. Um, and so it was like just to read kind of the room. Uh, this guy kind of walks in. I'm, I'm like looking at everybody coming in their costumes. It's, it's great. You know, you see a bunch of like old people, like kind of putting their, their best efforts into this and, and they're all, <laughs> you know, like and they got like fake mustaches and, you know, they got flapper outfits and like, there's like, it like, I don't know, gas station <laughs> attendant, like just random, I, just so insanely random. This guy comes up in like a, uh, sheriff outfit. I'm like, Oh, the strippers here, everybody. Nothing. Cricket. <laughs> that didn't land. Did huh? not land. <laughs> okay. And this is before I even did the speech. And I'm like, oh, fuck. Like, yeah, that was I am like, like, That was my heater. That was, <laughs> dude, that was my closer. You know, like, I am so, so in for it. Um, Justin, it, when, I got to say this. Justin was up there talking to me a little bit about this. And he goes, I thought I got over my fear of speech. <laughs> yeah, it, it He's all, and it yeah. just. Pulled it out of me. I told you guys, since the beginning of this podcast, anybody's been listening long enough, like, this is not my jam. Like, I'm not the guy that's going to, hey, guys, hey, you know, I have things to say. Like, I'm not the guy that's going to get up in front of everybody just to, like, hey, say things. Oh, my God. And dude. so now you add all these, like, like elements in there and, and um, there's Are you no petrified? alcohol. Are you petrified and no alcohol? This is a dry party. This is, okay, wow. this is all church people. This is all, like... Like potluck kind of uh, vibes. So was the whole room just quiet every time you try to make a joke? <laughs> quiet. My cousin was, and, and like my my brother. So my brother was up there with me. Maybe like, they're hearing aids. Let's <laughs> gonna make a joke about that too. I was like, hey, let's turn our miracle ears up, <laughs> and um, you know, let's party. No, my my closer. I think I talked about. Uh, I was like, everybody here, you know. I was like, there's probably a lot of parents here that went through the seventies. You know, and um, and you all probably had water beds. I just want to, want you to know that, like, I know what that is now as an adult. <laughs> you know, and then nothing. You know, and like, that was that was as clean as I could get yeah. for like an innuendo. Yeah, yeah. Of like, hey, you guys are probably fucking. You know, like, <laughs> water bed style. You know, like you just went all in. On yeah, like, told Justin to spike the punch of Viagra. <laughs> 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 that would have made things way more interesting. Yeah, that's getting fun. But you know what? Like, again, this is me and my, like, my parents loved it. Like, everybody had a good time. Nice. And it was like, you know, for, for their speed, it's just a different speed. And so you're talking about, like, like this was a total cultural thing. I grew up stuffy, like, conservative. Like, I forgot about all this stuff because I've been hanging out with you guys so long. <laughs> um, that uh, being in that environment, again, I remember now, like, even talking with a lot of the uh their friends growing up, they're like, I didn't know if you ever said a word. And in, in my head, I'm like, yeah, I didn't want to say anything to you guys. Like I, got, <laughs> like, I had to censor everything. Like, what am I going to talk about? You know, like I got nothing in common with you. You're that cute little chubby boy. Yeah, you're the, you're the kid that just sat there in the corner and was just like, mm -mm. <laughs> Cause I was, I was like, Oh, like I'm in just angry. So yeah. what was like the, okay. So you had a DJ there, you had, uh, imagine food. So was it like a, like dining dance hall theme? Yeah. Vibe? What was it like? Yeah. So, I mean, and, and like, uh, there was a, uh, 
my mom had this lady kind of coordinating dance moves. And so it was like line dancing kind of a vibe thing going on. And, and they played like some old tunes and, and it was, the music was great, but hilariously enough, after we do our kind of like shtick, me and my brother, I brought him up and we're trying, I was like, I, I can't do this much longer. It was like 20 minutes. Like I'm up there, like trying to like wow. come up with stories. That That's my a dad long time. Throws me like, yeah, he's like, <laughs> so remember that one story I told you guys about the yellow jackets of my, when my, friend and I were threw a rock at it. Yeah. And then like, you know, somebody got really stung and hurt and all that. Mm. He made my dad. He's like, Oh, tell that story. It's hilarious. And I'm like, it just makes me sound like an asshole. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, this I is not good that. for me. Yeah. I forgot about that story. I remember that story. He told it on the podcast. Yeah. And so, I mean, I, I tried to have you, fun with it. You probably and, bullied someone. In yeah. yeah like a <laughs> bully, dude. Like hundred percent. And like, we're just like hiding behind this car. Like, Oh no. You know, like, Poor you. Yeah. you know, like, <laughs> we did this to you. Um, so it That's was terrible. it was painfully cringe and, and awkward, but like everybody had fun and it was it turned out great. So it was a success for them. It was a success for them. Okay. Um, and um, and they're fifty years married. Fifty years wow. together. So wow. it's 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 substantial. I feel like Doug's hella pissed he didn't get invited. <laughs> yeah, my, I could use Doug there, my, dude. My group, I would like, were they any Doug, you there? got me right. Yeah, <laughs> somebody, just somebody to anchor in the audience that like help. You know, because we do, we do live events, and it's like at least I can get some you know some laughs in there, and like it, it just was like I just I haven't like gone up in front of people like bombed like in a long time like and that was like that was rough dude oh. i'm still like Ugh. that's a long time it? yeah, yeah like i feel gut, it you got in my guts, guts dude. Had, uh, like, oh. dylan recorded the whole thing yeah oh, was dylan there he was there oh no way and, and we were talking like we're gonna really have to spice this up with some graphics and some <laughs> sound effects or something like this is <laughs> laugh like, track yeah like <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly yeah, bro, like, a, like a little sitcom laugh track in the uh, back that would help dude it would be hilarious would have helped but yeah. uh yeah so that I had that. I had another funny thing. Kind of so Friday before all that, like my cousin flew in early, and like she got married recently, and and so I was like, kind of like, I'll I'll, I'll hang out with you guys. I was by myself. My kids and, and Courtney were gone, which that didn't help either. They weren't at the party to kind of help, you know, me uh, sort of riff. But um, so I we I was like, maybe I'll go to a concert, and I looked and I found a battle of the bands, and so I was like, oh, cool. You guys want to go hit this up and just, you know, have some drinks, whatever. And so we did that. We went to dinner and we go to this battle of bands and we get there and it was like, you know, this one little roped off section near the bar and nothing but teeny boppers. Yeah. And I was like, oh, this is like, like, these are like high school teeny, kids. Hold on. You said teeny boppers? Teeny boppers. Is that not? <sighs> Uh, that's a word. Uh, I, yeah, it is, right? Yeah, that's, yeah. We used to say that back in the day. That's a thing. So a bunch Nobody of Nobody says that anymore. Yeah. And so we're over there in the corner. And I'm like, wow, this is interesting. Young band up there. They're probably like, you know, 18, 20 looking ish. Maybe. I don't know. I have a bad gauge with all that, but, uh, it was just, we're kind of talking, we're listening to the bands. Next one comes up younger, you know, next one comes. This was like a high school. <laughs> you went to a battle with the bands. <laughs> I'm like, what the fuck are we doing here? We're like such creeps. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I was like, I was drinking. I'm not even anybody's parent. You know, I'm like, they're like, oh, so you know somebody up there? I'm like, I don't know anybody. Which one's <laughs> I'm, just here? I'm just I'm just here a 40 year old dude to here. observe. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like what a creep. Which one's your kid? Yeah. Oh, oh, uh, so that was my weekend. Oh, I like yeah, I like being around when I used to train. Uh, you know, people in that age group. I used to love seeing old people old couples together because old couples have been together for a long time the way they argue is so different it's funny yeah it's so different because yeah. i think once after a certain point i think you just like it's like whatever dude. well when you do when you, you put, know it doesn't affect me not only that I'm but when saying, you put 50 years in with someone like i mean i i mean I, we katrina and i only made it 13 years i can only imagine what 50 is you know what they're going to say before they say yeah. it yeah you know what i'm saying you know what like makes the bickering it, yeah you know what makes yeah. them mad you know if they're irritated you say you know what i'm saying so you can like cut them off on their even being irritated I yeah. know what the fuck you're going to say right yeah. now. You know like, <laughs> so there's the, the, I think there's like such great, and I mean, or at least the ones that I think that look happy and healthy, successful that have lasted that long have this kind of, I don't know, like sarcastic, like I around, think a lot of acceptance. Yeah. You know I mean? Even like, or even around the fights and disagreements, there's yeah, like you sarcasm just roll your and eyes and humor. Move like, on. Yeah. Know, it's laugh the about it. 700th yeah. time we've argued about that. Yeah, exactly. you know, it's like, wow. what it is what it is. Dude, I made a huge, uh, uh, supplement blunder this weekend. I took, uh, I bought some bone broth protein from whole foods, uh, assuming cause collagen typically tastes good with collagen type protein always typically it tastes good. bland or plate basically yeah oh it was gross dude i bought one and it uh, was a bone broth protein chocolate 
Ugh. And I've been spoiled by Paleo Valley's because it's just so good. And I thought, oh, this is, it was gross. But I looked at the ingredients and it was uh, beef bone, chicken bone, fish bone. Ugh. Oh, what? So it had a little bit of a taste to it. Ew. Yeah, dude. It was gross. What do you think the point of, of mixing the different bones? Different is? types of, this is the, I think it's just a, a marketing ploy, different types of whatever right, so collagen or whatever. It was gross, dude. I literally threw it away. I drank yeah, one serving of it like a, and a tossed it. Formula. But I'm, <laughs> we're super spoiled with the Paleo Valley chocolate. It took like, me a long, nothing it, comes close to that. It took me a long time to get on board with that. You got me on that. And that's actually, I prefer that now. That's gotten to a point now where, I, unless I'm making like a, where I'm, Cooking with it, yeah, or make like mm -hmm. the, I would prefer that now. It's like it just mixing that with just some water and mm -hmm. almond milk. It goes down so smooth, dude. Did you guys hear about that middle school in Beverly Hills? With those kids getting kicked out. They, of course, they're middle school, so we don't have names and stuff. But you hear what happened? No, mm -hmm. this is gonna. This is this is, and I know why it went national. It's like national news or whatever. Uh, probably because it's gonna happen more and more. I guess some kids made some deep fake nudes of other kids oh, in wow. the school. Wow. What? They were so fakes? The, yeah, they were fakes. Because remember, there was there was that story we told at the high school level where there was kids that were passing around images. Actual images. Yeah, actual images. Now, that's happened before, but this is different now because you have AI now. Wow. Right? I could take a picture of you, and it can make it realistically These look poor like kids, you're man. naked. <laughs> it's just so much out there. Dude. So even if it's not real, imagine was, being a kid like that, and then there's nuts. pictures circulating of you. Was it was it one of you guys that was talking about that? That's crazy. That was the yeah. direction like pornography was going to, where they're yeah. going to be able to put like anybody's face yep. on on like you put some super famous model or whatever that on the body and stuff like that or on the yeah on their body, and so it looks like it matches and it's really them. Yep. Or that, that's going to be. We, and how are they going to stop that? Yeah, like that's how one, the thing. I'm how, once to... the cat's out the bag, like how are you going to keep that from happening? This reminds me of an Adam Sandler movie. They, there was like this kid that <laughs> he was like, uh, um, they they found like his stash of porn in the bed or whatever, and then he took a picture of like the babysitter's face uh, and put it on there. You know, <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> now this is like that on uh, steroids. I guess. Well, so. if this is like that, and then it gets shared and it looks yeah. realistic. Wow. So imagine being a kid, like I said, and you receive a picture, your friend's like, dude, is this yeah, just this imagine you're, of you? Yeah, you're that horny like teenage boy and, and and you know, it's like you're you're fixated on like your babysitter or whatever. It's like oh, dude, God, dude. dude, this, this is, is crazy. getting it's getting weird. And because it's gonna look so realistic, it's a feels like a violation. You know what I mean? Like you get imagine seeing a picture of yourself as an adult, you'd be like, That's not me, obviously. But imagine mm -hmm. as a kid, other kids in your school seeing it. Oh my God. And then it's out there. That's, it's nuts. Man. Like, how do you get rid of it? These phones are, yeah, something else. Dude, this is going to be, it's going to be weird. I know. I, how do you even, how do you even regulate that? I, that's what I'm trying to think. I'm seriously trying to wrap my brain around how do you even stop this from happening? I don't think you can. I mean, you know what ends up happening is that you, we get to a place where, which is what I would think would end up happening is schools start outlawing phones on campuses. Like it gets to a point where it's like it's too impossible to police. Therefore, you just can't have them here. Like you, you have to go off premises. You, you think, can't be here. That way, these kids can't be sharing, showing, doing any of that stuff anymore. Do like you it. think that in the future they'll regulate these deep fake AIs so that they can't do this with anyone without their permission? Because hmm. I mean, on one hand, you're like it's not really a picture of you, mm -hmm. so what's the big deal? But on the other hand, it's like it looks so real. I mean, let's because they're let, getting so well, here, good. Here's the deal: yeah. this has been happening for a long time. It's just now it's gotten so. That's accurate, the point, yeah. Right, so it's like they never stopped it before. Like this, this was always no, happening. Because you can tell it's fake, right? So also now just because it's the because the yeah. because the Photoshop is so good now we have to worry about that. That's yeah. like think yeah, about the, that. The technology to detect it's always going to be behind. Yeah, and yeah. and 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 the and it, that's it with images. It's going what follows is video. When the video gets so good, you can't tell. We're all going to be. I've already been. That's going to be. I've weird. already got caught up sending stuff yeah. to like my buddies. Like, oh my god, you see this? And it's like these old interviews of like, uh, like super famous. Like the, the one I had just sent was like an ESPN reporter, right? Really famous mm -hmm. ESPN reporter. And it was an old interview, like in the eighties of him. And the way he was talking was just like, Oh my God. Like, I can't believe he said that in an interview. Oh, I saw that. You sent that to me. Yeah. That wasn't it real. Wasn't real. It was doctor. Wow. And you just can't even tell his lips are moving on. It looks like it's completely, 
you don't real and it's the edit is so good that you well, swear I've seen now if you're an evil dictator right mm -hmm. like and you're seeing this as a powerful resource you know in the future <laughs> and you know how the first step for a lot of these evil dictators and tyrants is to like throw out all the books throw out all the yep. you know previous history and like education and you know, you could literally like rewrite and refilm and 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 completely distort and twist history. Well, you yeah. know, the Soviets, they I mean, they obviously didn't have the technology, but there were pictures of like if you got executed, they would erase you from all the photos. And so they you would yes. see photos of like Stalin. You just don't exist. And it looks like, like he's by himself, but the eliminate. original photo was with him with this person that got executed. Yeah. Type of deal. Crazy. I don't you know so here's what I think is gonna happen. And I heard this point made on all in the all in podcast, and I agree with it. I think it's going to get to the point where people are going to beg for an arbitrator. They're going to beg for Someone, some kind of a seal yeah. of a of like authenticity. I know. Is and then who's going to be the holder? Which, of that? Yeah, exactly. Who is that a good thing? No, that doesn't necessarily fix it. <laughs> it. The person behind that, I'm no, never going to trust. It, just, yeah, exactly. Just give somebody else like no. a crazy amount of power and control. I don't. It's so. Are hard. we going to no, be in a post media know, time? So I I think the move is like with the direction I would go, which is the you just that's a that's a tool. It's not necessary. The kids can go to school and not have phones at school. 100%. Oh, yeah. We have fucking, we'll put pay phones back in schools, and it's like, you need to call or do whatever that. You can call your family, just like we did, you know, 25 yeah. years ago. Like, they do not need Beepers to have- are back, dude. They do not need yeah. to have those there. <laughs> yeah. Like, we, you can, you, they can be taught, and I think that's the best way to do it. What they do at home with their parents, that's the parents' job. Yeah. Now you're home with your mom and dad. Like, it's their job to make sure you're not doing weird shit like that. But at least it's, if I'm in schools, I would think that that would be the move. Instead of trying to have some do hire think, some company to come in, do you think though generally we're going to be in a post media time at some point where everyone's just going to be like, I don't know what I believe, I don't believe any of it unless I see it right in front of my face. So I mean, it's it, all bullshit. To me, it still it it yeah. still fits perfectly yeah. into the plugged in unplugged narrative that I keep talking yeah. about. Like, I just think that it'll you if you choose to be on you choose to part of the reason why you choose to be unplugged you're like yeah half that stuff is fake and manipulated and then there's a there's a narrative around it they're trying to tell a story they're trying to tell you so my family and i we choose to be unplugged completely mm -hmm. and then there'll be the other people that will probably opt for oh well no it has mm -hmm. the seal on it that's real and they're all in the the please lie in. to me uh -huh. what people yeah yeah. Mm -hmm. No, I I think that's uh, the direction that we're speaking of media so is this legit mike tyson is going to fight Jake Paul. Dude. Okay, By the so way, do you guys know how old Mike Tyson is? 55 or 57? No, seven. 57. He's going to be 58, I think, when the fight happens. Wow. So did he's you, not like... I just, did you see the videos I mean, of him working out still? Yeah. It's, but, yeah, he's explosive. He hasn't... Uh, I, mean, he's, I mean, he's Tyson. He's a beast. Yeah, he's Tyson. Listen, oh, he's still 57 Tyson, but, hey, listen, 58. I listen. I don't want him what, to fight, though. Man. I know. It's I don't like, think ugh. it's healthy a healthy thing to do no matter what. But what do we always say? The last thing to go is what? A boxer's power. power. Their yeah. power. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But he's, their speed, one, agility, and their chin. He's goes. one of the most powerful boxers ever. Yep. Okay. Yep. And I don't know. I think he looks he looks light enough and quick enough on his feet that if he can elude some of his punches, I mean, I, here's what I I think. I'm way more interested in the business side of this. Yeah. I think it's so interesting. For sure. I mean, I'm not the right person, you know, go watch Tony yeah. Jeffries talk about if it's a healthy or the right thing to do. And so that I know he posted a whole video on it and, and his view from a boxing perspective, which I'm not an authority in that space. From a business perspective, I'm fascinated by it. Like brilliant fucking move, even more interesting that they went through Netflix instead of a pay-per-view. Yeah. So this fight is going to be for free. Yeah. Maybe one of the most watched fights ever. How, how are they going to monetize? So the th I, this is what I think that I don't, I looked up to see what Netflix was paying Jake Paul and Mike Tyson and there's nothing on it. I can't find it anywhere. Maybe Andrew can dig, but I, I looked at so think Netflix is paying him fat. Yeah. Oh, have to be. Yeah. So I think Netflix and okay. And you real easy to estimate that Jake Paul, his last five fights, all you have to do is see what his, his pay per view, pay per view pool is. I don't know what it was. Let's just say for argument's mm -hmm. sake, it was $50 million, right? Okay, so he 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 knows he can generate fifty million on his own in a pay per view. We're Netflix. We want to entice him and Mike Tyson to have this on our streaming platform. So we offer them each seventy five million, mm -hmm. and then their desired outcome is millions and millions of people watch this thing, and a percentage of them don't have. Yeah, they forget to cancel. Or, yeah, yeah, they don't have a subscription. Continuing, so they have to pay at least the twelve dollars to get in mm -hmm. the first time, and then a percentage of those people will remain coming or staying with Netflix for the next six months to a year and mm -hmm. they recoup all their money and they wouldn't do it if it didn't make sense. It's got to make sense. What's yeah. crazy to me about this is that Mike Tyson being 58, well past his prime. Well past, I think the oldest 
like boxer that was successful four was four minute 45. Oh, right. Was no. he 45 or 44? That's, and by the way, there's a big difference. The older you get, okay, the bigger the difference becomes between, you know, every, de every decade. So 35, you know, 25 to 35, there's a difference. There's a bigger difference, 35 to 45. There's a really big difference, 35 to 55, 60. Every decade is, is so Mike Tyson is so far out of his prime, yeah. but the fact that he's able to pull so many people because of how impactful now, he didn't was he fight uh, uh, Holyfield? Um, a no, it was years back. It was, no, somebody, no, it was a long time. Ago. Somebody old someone. though. Recent, not really. It was like four years ago. It right? wasn't that. It, yeah, it wasn't like uh, it was at a Jake Paul fight. He 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 fought another boxer. Tyson did. Yes. See what Tyson's last fight was. Yeah, I'd like you know. So okay, I think because they're friends, right? Jake and him are friends. Mm -hmm. I think this is a, a complete like let, exhibition to yeah. them. You know what I'm saying? Like they're going to hype it up. Oh, calling each other out yeah. and the stare down and the shit talking. I mean, that's Jake Paul's a master at that. But there's got to be this like behind the scenes. Hey, listen, like, you know, like don't hit me that hard <laughs> <laughs> talk or like, hey, I'll do this with you. But then what does it say? Oh, 2005. Well, he fought Roy Jones Jr. Oh yeah, Roy. No, yeah, no, 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 2020. No. He 2020. Had, yeah. Oh, so he did four years ago. But did you guys watch that? No, I didn't watch it. So uh, I, I mean, it, you could tell he gets fatigued more, right, faster or whatever. And I he, mean, by right. the way, he was already that fighter. He was a fighter who, if he didn't win in the first three to four, I forget what his stats were. Well, the longer you the, went, the better he's the, the knockout were. artist. Yeah. yeah, yeah. If he he no, if you if he wasn't knocking someone out in the first four rounds, then it was. Now, it was, do you guys hope that Tyson just knocks him out? <laughs> of course. <laughs> yeah, man. I mean, they, everybody, everybody wants subscribes. To I see. mean, this is what this is the mastery behind Jake Paul. He's yeah. he's he's positioned himself as the ultimate heel. Watch him lose. He's the ultimate heel. So he just goes and finds these fights that people would be interested in seeing him get knocked out. And by it'd be interesting. You know what he's? I don't know what his last fight pulled, but I that's the least interested i've heard any i wasn't interested at all this mm -hmm. last one like yeah but you don't even know who he fought I don't right even know, yeah. yeah yeah so no one was even paying attention to uh the fights speaking of fights did you see so did you follow the whole uh francis nagano i think that's how you say last oh, name didn't he just get knocked out yes yeah so he's the one who he's the one who was the mma fighter the heavyweight mma fighter that fought tyson fury and everybody said that Tyson Fury actually lost, and they were so surprised. Like Tyson Fury is like the baddest boxer on the planet right now, right? Mm -hmm. And and everyone said that Francis really won that fight, but they gave it to Tyson because it's it was in boxing class. Everybody was super oh. pissed off about it. So then this guy is like one of Tyson Fury's Tyson Fury's nemesis in the boxing world, but not considered to be as good as Tyson. So you know, Brendan Schaub, all these people were were talking about the fight, saying that Francis was just gonna just destroy him, and he got. Laid out like yeah, buckle. Rock. Francis did, or did yeah, he oh. yeah, he got put to sleep in the second round. Yeah. Wow, yeah, it was gnarly. Yeah, what do you got, got there, got Doug? Shot on him. It's oh, actually Andrew. Andrew. Is that Andrew? You got, Andrew? got a separate thing from Netflix. Uh, so Netflix, they paid uh, two tennis players a million dollars each in the last last stream live event that they did. So that gives an idea how much Paul and Tice are going to make. Uh, although I'm sure they'll make much more, but separately, they just signed a five billion dollar broadcasting deal to host WWE. Five oh. billion? Whoa. Whoa. Wow. wow! 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 Okay, so they're making moves in the sports world. What's so? Yeah. What, give me where the ticker on Netflix. Tell me where the where the. <laughs> yeah, I'm serious. Dude. I mean, think about it. you. You you take WWE. You start moving into the the getting these uh, streaming and fighting mm -hmm. these fights. It's a brilliant strategy. By the way, on, speaking of pro part. wrestlers and stuff, have you guys? Justin will know this. Have you ever heard of six oh four humiliation year. humiliation ritual? Humiliation ritual. Yes. So John Cena came out to present an award, I think, at the Oscars, and he came out naked oh, wearing a sign about symbolism and uh, and, yes. and and people are posting this on X, which you know some kind of Illuminati thing. Yeah, and they're what? saying, oh, this was part yeah. of his humiliation ritual. Apparently, the quote unquote <laughs> Illuminati part of uh, you know this doing, is what they think the Will Smith and all that. Yeah, is that part too. of like what you need to do to follow them and be a part of whatever is you have to also go through a humiliation ritual. And part of that means if you're a guy, you'll come out dressed like a girl. You make yourself look like an idiot. You have to embarrass yourself in front of everybody. And so they're saying that this was John Cena's. He came out like naked with like a sign. Yeah. Him, right? Like, oh, yeah. here he is with the Illuminati humiliation ritual. Yeah, it was, yeah, dude. It was weird. There's um, a lot of weird stuff around. I mean, I'm, I'm listening yeah. now. I'm all tinfoil. <laughs> yeah, no, no. <laughs> got we finally got you, Hey, dude. I'm all ears, bro. I'm we all ears We need to talk about <laughs> yeah. that so, uh, yes, the, documentary. The, the, the octopus yeah. uh, murders. Murders. Explain uh, this. It's just- Is there too I mean, much in there for you guys to explain? Yeah, there is. a lot. There is a lot in there. It's just, and, and honestly, it, it, like Doug's point, it, like, it ends where it doesn't like it 
you know, conclude yeah. for sure. Any, but it tells enough that makes you go like, Oh my God. Yeah. They were God. just saving their own ass, you know, at the end of that. So to end it that way. Cause it was just like, it, it was pretty clear, mm. uh, you know, where, where a lot of, uh, um, meddling was happening. So the, the, the idea of the octopus is that it's like, and the, the way the kind of the, the premise of this, this Netflix uh, doc series goes is like, this reporter is like this investigative reporter is like going into like this 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 like suicide that happened to another uh to another reporter but let and me guess the reporter was getting close to like uncovering yes, some shit some yes mm -hmm. and and as the so that's like the the center of like mm -hmm. him trying to figure this out and the more he dug it had layers, all these layers, la layers, layers, layers yeah. of that went crazy deep into this conspiracy crazy deep into this conspiracy crazy like yeah and they were all interconnected. So, like, he got too close to some crazy some shit. Some real big, yes. yeah. Did you guys, big time stuff. Have you guys ever seen a list of the people that apparently, I don't know if this is, this is like confirmed or not, apparently the people connected to the Clintons that have committed suicide? Yes. <laughs> the, or have died. So, by, Patrick like, Bet David did it. Did you not watch that? I, oh, I did. He got pissed. So, got, so, so Patrick Bet David had- They were talking the, to Anthony Weiner, right? Yeah, yeah the guy who, yeah, who's, yeah, who's fa friends, family friends of the Clintons, yeah, right? Yeah. And he, he you know, put him on the spot and literally had the entire list- and he like went. He, he got so mad. I don't know if you watched that interview or not, but he got so pissed because he was like challenging him on like, here are all the people yeah. connected to the Clintons that have like died randomly. It's like yeah. the list is crazy big. Like it's, it's almost. I know I've seen it before. I don't know if it's confirmed. It's way but past the uh, <laughs> coincidental uh, range of yeah. people. Yeah, they got suicide. I, I, I I have something else that's crazy, and I'll, I'll have Andrew or Doug look up for me to confirm this because it blew my mind. I actually heard um, Tony Robbins say it. Tony Robbins said this on an interview and I was like, get the fuck out of here. I got to write this down. So I tell the guys this because it, mm -hmm. it threw me way off. Okay. 2007 iPhone one comes out. So if every iPhone, if you bought every iPhone from 2007 till now, you would have spent now $20,600 on iPhones. Okay. Okay. It seems uh, that's logical math. Sure. If instead of buying the iPhone, you put the exact same money that you would have bought the iPhone into buying the shares of the stock. How much would you have? Of Apple. Oh of Apple. God. How, oh, how wow. much would, how much would you have today? Oh my God. Um two hundred thousand dollars. Two hundred and six million dollars. Whoa. Whoa. What? Are you dude? Wow. Yeah. I, I found another version of this. this and it's even more money. Three hundred and sixty seven million. Is what? that insane? That's crazy. I know. Dude. You're like me. You're like sitting here going like, that doesn't even math. That can't be right, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, That's literally, look at. Wow. That to buy, wow, okay. I need my time machine. In Apple stock, you'd be sitting pretty, wow. Wow. <laughs> That's crazy. <laughs> Isn't that nuts? Yeah. That you know, make it makes sense. you, it makes you, it's almost like, of course, this is hindsight, right? But it's like, if you're watching culture around you, and everybody's jumping on something and it's it's like a cultural phenomenon. Right. If you're smart, you're thinking to yourself, how do I capitalize on everyone's behaviors moving in that direction right now? Rather than jumping on board okay. or just jumping on board and getting the phone yourself. Uh -huh. That's crazy numbers right there. What's so interesting to me about that is just like, you know, how many people are living paycheck to paycheck and but, keep they've buying the iPhones. but they've bought every iPhone. And it's like that... That's a little more than financial freedom right there. <laughs> you know, yeah, I, dude, I saw freedom. that. I was floored. Yeah. Is that not insane? That may, that's, no, that's crazy to me. I know. I'm speechless. Kind of makes me, that's, I was the same. I did not. Bit. So that, that number is even bigger than the one I, that he said. And I was like, no way. That, that, can't. that, makes, me, that makes me upset. <laughs> yeah, it does. It hurts, yeah. my, hurts my, hurts my All right, I'm, I'll go with, I'll go into positive now. I just yeah. read an interesting study on, do you know that there's an exercise gender gap? Have you guys heard of this? An exercise gender gap? Yeah, it's what actually, it's not what you think it is. So they did a big study on men and women and looked at the health effects of cardio, strength training, whatever. And they found in these studies that women get a larger positive effect in terms of mortality risk than men do with the same, same time being spent exercising. Is it... So in other words, I'll give you, I'll give you, watch this. Men reach their maximal survival benefit from, and they talked about brisk walking and cycling. Okay. On this one. So men reach their maximal survival benefit based on these studies by doing this level of exercise about five hours per week. Women got the same effect 
from two and a half hours a week in terms of the, the mortality effect benefit. Hmm. Strength training. Men reach their peak of benefits for mortality from three days a week. Women only needed one to get the same effect. Huh. I'm trying to think of why that, that would be the case. Is it because yeah. of, uh, I mean, is it, I mean, you, it'd be interesting to see if they tease out like professions and things like that. Is it because men are going to be typically more physical, have more laborious type of jobs? Like, and so the difference of like that they would get benefit, the benefit? Wise, would take more physical strength and building, which is if women have jobs that are less physical, it would take just a minimal amount for them to see. I have big to really gains. think about this and why this is the case. The, 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 uh, off the top of my head, I do know that the female hormone profile is largely protective in comparison to the male hormone profile when it comes to um, longevity. We know this, right? Women live longer yeah. um, than men. Uh, um, and so hmm. I'm wondering if it has to do with that. I'm wondering if it has to do with how the male body may be. Uh, it's, su it's supposedly more resistant to physical stress. But does that also mean then the adaptations are of course. not as, as as big? It would mean that if we're if you if our if we are or more, maybe women get a negative effect when men would get a positive because of the the, the too much stress on the body. Yeah, it's interesting. I mean, nonetheless, it's super related, fascinating. Sure. Very. Yeah, that they take they they need they do less, less and get better results. Yeah, yeah. With, yeah, or the same results with less work. Wow. So does that now, mean they have more stress in general, or than men, or is that like? Uh, I mean, that's I, I can't even speculate. On yeah, that. I don't I don't know. I find it. Now here's what's interesting as, as a, you know, as when I managed gyms and stuff, the people that were more likely to overdo it were women. Mm -hmm. They were more likely to come mm -hmm. in way too often, go too often. Oh, you, you think so? Yeah. Yeah. I don't know if I agree with that. Yeah. I don't know if I agree with that. Think about, well, think about, in I mean, terms of volume versus intensity, I would say men intensity, yes, women in volume, yes, yeah. just frequency and showing yeah, up. Yeah, okay. Up. I mean, because of course that like the the classes are geared towards attracting women. Yeah. So the the class the class mentality and philosophy of training, which so I, that's probably right. Like, because but it, intensity was always my men. Yeah. Like men oh, are yeah. my 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 female yeah, clients too. were reluctant to add weight to the bar and push themselves like that. They were more comfortable with like, oh, I do this much weight for this exercise. Right. Sticking to that, right, right, it was right. hard to get them to push the intensity. Where men were always the opposite. They were like, oh, I could do more, and you're like, no, you shouldn't actually. That's plenty for mm -hmm. you. You're not. <laughs> your form's already off. No, no, I put more on there. <clears throat> so from that perspective, I think yeah. men over overdo it yeah. more. Yeah, interesting though. Right. Yeah, that is yeah. interesting. I'm gonna, I got to really think about what could potentially be. Yeah, I got to bring something up. I was like, uh, I had a day off Friday and I was just kind of like watching TV. I never watched daytime TV. So mm. this was all like an education for me. Mm. Uh, the commercials and, and two, like there's still like TV that's like network TV that has like commercials and have these only like, when i'm in hotels do i see it i'm yeah. like I'm, I'm always fascinated as like that hasn't evolved at all it's mm -hmm. just like i just i'm not used to it anymore uh and there's this like brand of cbd that was pitching their product and i was like oh. on tv yeah yeah oh, and i was like how are they pitching this and and you know what's their unique characteristics and like how are they like trying to portray this because you know we know we work with like the best one out there but yeah. they're talking about like emphasizing that the delivery system for it was like superior to everybody else. And that you're going to feel it almost like immediately because of the this. delivery system. I was like, what the fuck are you talking about? What, what magical science is this? There isn't, you know, what's funny is that it's like, it's like the same, you know, the same, uh, that creatine follows. Yep. I was just, just like, going to say, if, if like a product creatine. comes out, so, you know, we work with net, that's who you're referring to. So, yeah. and they're the, they're the best, they're the best on the market. But whenever something comes out that works, the next way to differentiate yourself is to come up with a better delivery system. Yeah. Better More delivery system. system. Yeah, it is like creatine. Yeah. It is. Yeah. Creatine yeah. was the yeah. same way too. It's like, no, the, the best stuff is just a plain old boring shit. Yeah. Like, no, or, they pa or they pair it with something else, you yeah. know, and they go, oh, you know. More oh. effective. Yeah, because because of these reasons. No, cannabinoids are very e easily absorbed. They're liposomal. You take them with a fat or an oil. They're typically mm -hmm. in an oil. If you take it orally. You can absorb some of it through the mucosal membranes of the mouth. So you can put it under your tongue 
or of course vape it or smoke it. Um, it's very well absorbed. It's not, it's not something that your body doesn't absorb or utilize very well. Yeah, there isn't a delivery. Yeah, that's not problem. like a huge pain point. Yeah. No, no. no. <laughs> I'm like, what is this? So no, no, that's, no, no, that's no. Interesting. No, no. I have something interesting for you guys. Yeah. You guys, did you guys ever watch? Who watched the Shannon Sharp and the Cat Williams interview? Oh, yeah, I watched that. That yeah. was good. Did you watch that? Mm -hmm. Oh, you, did you watch that? I watched about half of it. It was yeah. so good. Right? It was rolling like everybody. Was so best. did you hear? Did you hear Shannon Sharp talk about? how much money he made from that one interview from YouTube. Wow. How much? how much more than he made in any year of his playing in the NFL. Get oh, wow. Out of here. And from what that's from one, just from the, just like, that one interview you know how advertisement. So I know his best year in the NFL, he made $5 million for the Broncos one year. No way. So it was more than that. How many views did it get? It, I don't know where it's at now. Maybe Andrew can pull it up and tell me where it's at. I mean, that's like, that was like a definitive interview. Like he like was coming out. Oh like, yeah. With, I mean, he's like Cat Williams. I feel like he's been put on the map again right now. Like he's uh -huh. going all over the place now. I know he just did the big Joe Rogan one too, which by the way was a great interview too. I watched. The See, Joe that Rogan. was great, and they didn't million. even get into it. They I mean, didn't even get into like he didn't reference like like because he was obviously talking about other comedians and was kind of you know throwing shade. And that didn't even come up in the Joe Rogan interview. I was like really surprised by that. Actually. How, how many views, Andrew? Sixty-one million. And you made and he made more than five million dollars. It's a long interview. Yes. So they could and pack people, it full and, of and and so I mean and you know how commercial. you guys know how Netflix. I mean how uh, YouTube works, right? The how long they stay connected. So, so it's so like one video. Yeah. Cause it, that's the thing that's you always can get a lot of views on a tiny short that, video. It's what's so deceiving about how you get paid on YouTube is like, you cannot just go buy subscribers. You cannot just go buy views because it's, it's also how long they watch it because how long they're engaged. Yeah. Because so the way the ad revenue works on there is, so if you watch it, like if you watch that full interview, like I did, by the time I finished the three hours, I probably got hit with, I don't know, 20 uh, YouTube ads. If you make it all the way through, if you only make it through the first five minutes, you only get one ad. Right. You know what I'm saying? If you, that's all that's. And so the drop off rate really mm -hmm. matters. And mm -hmm. so if it's a really engaging interview that goes three hours long, yeah. that keeps a majority of that 60 million until the end. Oh man, they're making, I mean, made, made over 5 million for sure. That one wow. video. That wow. Crazy? That's crazy. Isn't that's, that wild? We got to yeah. get better at interviewing. <laughs> I know. You know I mean? Who can we bring back to life that uh, has been yeah. out of the I got I got another thing that I came across that I thought was pretty cool too. So you remember when um, Elon went over to uh, China and he was trying to work with them and they, they fucked him over and they basically stole all his like information, like as far as like how he made Tesla. Do you guys remember that? Do you remember yeah. that was like, we it talked about it on the show. What was their, their fall? It was like Lumen or I forget what. Yeah, yeah. They tried something. Well, they have, they have a, they have a new one called, I, had, I wrote it down because I don't even know how to pronounce it. It's like Yang, Yang Wang, Yang Wang U9. Have you seen this car? No. This no. actually looks fucking no. sick. But the name oh, is I Yang love the so name, yeah. Yang Wang U9. I know. <laughs> Might be Yang Wang. Oh, too. Yang Wang. Sorry. Uh, Could yeah, be. I don't yeah, know. Jumping my Yang Wang. It's Let's their, go. their entry into the supercar, dude. Oh, that looks kind of cool. Oh, it looks super cool, wow. dude. What? Yeah. yeah. It's like uh, zero, it's I think like zero to 60 Rambo and like two. Hybrid. Yeah, it's, it's supposed to be compete with those. Wow. So it's like zero to 60 in 2.3 or 2.5. I mean, that's, you're talking about your Lambo, you know, Aventador and. That's cool. Yeah. Isn't that cool? That is very cool. Uh, pretty dope looking So that, too. They, you think that they stole his. Well, his okay. So that, that's two different conversations. Oh, okay. I was just asking if you remember that. So we talked, you talked about it on the show way back when it was, when he went over there, he was working out some sort of partnership with China. And I'm sure somebody on the mm -hmm. internet is going to fucking slam me for this and correct me. So I'm like, don't quote me on how it exactly played out but i know he went over there to to bring tesla over there and i remember everybody was giving him shit because he was over in china and he was working with china and so everybody was giving him shit and then what ended up happening was they basically shut it down or said no after they already learned all the technology yeah, yeah so they basically yeah. brought him over wow. just steal all yeah the tech said said they were gonna you know shit. introduce tesla to the china market and all this stuff like that and then they basically took all what they they could learn from him and then basically there's a lot of companies that get their shit stolen and then sold in China, this is having a lot, a lot, yeah, a lot. Because yeah, how do you, how do you like, problem. yeah, what are you go sue them? <laughs> like, what are you gonna do? Yeah, what are you gonna do? And it's, it's a huge federal, market. Yeah, it's the government. Who was it? Was involved. it Shane Gillis or some one of those comedians was talking about that? That's what uh, that China is, is like, just the greatest copycat. Totally. Like even their success in their economy over there, that which people yeah. tout all the time. It's like that's they didn't create themselves anything. It's like they no. go over and they've ripped it off of somebody else. And well, then they provide all the factories to, you know, build everything. Yeah. And it's like, Dude, okay, I got to show you, I, I sent you a text. I don't know if you could pull it up on the screen. Did I, I just learned this. Did you know 
So medieval churches or churches that are old, they have like carpenters and painters go in and decorate them. And did you guys know that oftentimes painters or carpenters in corners of the church up at the top or whatever, <laughs> look at this picture. A carpenter did like a little, he, he. It was a little nutsack. Yeah. He, he oh put my that God. Oh, it's even worse. No way. <laughs> so what no they do, way. this isn't a church. They, what they'll do is they'll do, they'll do like a carving or a paint, a picture. <laughs> kind of like. Dude, tell me Justin would never be the first. Yes, dude. 100% would do some shit and like they, And nobody's going to see it because it's way up in the corner. Yeah, it's in the detail. Yeah, it's way up in the corner somewhere, but it's like their way of putting their like little prank or whatever. Uh-huh. You know what I mean? So yeah. don't. So this is not the only one. There's like, wow. there's lots of stuff like this where they'll find it and be like, "Who did that?" Okay, so that's been happening forever. <laughs> now that makes me that, that makes me think that's exactly what happened with the it. whole Disney movies too. Yes, of with course. the editors and yeah. all that. We haven't the, changed, dude. The animators. We haven't. No. Or yes, they threw little little in things there. in there that look sexual and funny, and really it was just a, like a, it's just a, with your friends. Yeah, hey bro, watch this. Yeah, yeah. You know, pause it at yeah, thirty seconds. Probably the majority yeah. isn't as nefarious. It's just yeah, people that are just you know joking and and trying to get. I mean, you would too i totally would totally yeah, yeah. if i was doing something like that i'd be like hey go check out the <laughs> Dude, top right hand to corner real i used to do this training my salespeople. Uh, so it's full disclosure it's gonna sound like an asshole but when i was training my salespeople, i would do what's called a to and a to is a turnover you go in you take over the presentation and you're presenting the you know the membership to the gym or whatever and your salesperson's listening to how you're presenting and when i would do this you know you do this Oh, 50 times a day. And you're with these people for yeah, 12 yeah. hours. So you got to learn to have fun with it. So you have fun with it. So yeah. I would throw in body parts that don't exist yeah, yeah, yeah. and exercises that I made up. Yeah, yeah. And the person sitting across from me doesn't know that I just made it up. But my sales guy knows. Yeah. yeah, yeah. My yeah, sales yeah, yeah. are they're laughing. Yeah, yeah. And so I would do. I used to do the same thing. Uh -huh. yeah, yeah, I'm sure. No. Uh, we used to even have things where like you would tell each other, you would bet like, hey, I'm going to go in this presentation and I bet you I find a way to insert this word. Yes. Yeah. Like yeah, some yeah. random ass word. Yes. It's like, there's no way you're going to fit that in there. Yes, like, you know, And you would find a way to get it in the conversation it was yeah, like yeah, yeah. yeah no it's uh, just, i yeah, actually think know, there's a lot of for what we're talking about there's a lot of value to that like learning that art of being able to communicate that well that you can be having this serious conversation and then find a way to insert that and, and then, then the next person they're trying not to laugh yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. like, i did it uh, yeah. i don't know for sure anyway yeah. i got a shout out so a book that i read years ago um and uh i just thought about it the other day a really impactful book for me called the peaceful warrior have you guys ever read that i've heard of that book uh -uh. really really good dan millman no. Excellent book um, to read. And it was, I know why it came up. Um, I got interviewed and someone asked me about my spiritual journey. That was the one of the first books that got me to kind of like start moving in that direction. It's oh, not right. a, it's not a, Religious book. It's nothing like that. It's a very well written book. But it made you open up to like the it, uh, it just impacted legitimacy in, of like it just spiritual, spiritual practices. Yeah. There was a movie based on it and everything too. Oh, really? really, really good book. Yeah, that's hmm. it right there. Oh, Peaceful Warrior. Yeah, it's about this gymnast that meets this homeless guy. And the homeless guy ends up like becoming his mentor. It's a really cool. Oh, is it is it fictional? It's fictional. Oh. Well, I think he said it was true. I don't remember. I think it's a combination. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Have something? you read it, Doug? There... I did, and I actually saw the movie too. Yeah, great. Oh, right? you do. Uh, how was the movie? It was pretty good. Yeah, yeah. Nick Nolte. Yeah. I remember Nolte. as a kid, I used to say I don't read books that I want to ruin the movie. <laughs> 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 I just thought of that. Stupid. <laughs> anyway. Element is an electrolyte powder you add to your water that has the right amount of sodium for better muscle contractions and performance. No artificial sweeteners, no sugar. And again, it's got the right amount of sodium. Most electrolyte powders are too low in sodium to even make a difference. Go check out Element. Go to drinklmnt.com forward slash mind pump. And on that link, you'll get a free sample pack with any order. All right, back to the show. Our first caller is Matt from Alaska. What Matt, up, Matt? What's up, man? So how you guys doing? Good, good, bro. How, how you, you doing? doing? Pretty good. All right. I just want to ask you guys, are you guys nervous right now? Very, you all right? very <laughs> nervous. <laughs> Every time, man. I'm sweating. No, thanks for calling in, man. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Yeah, so what I want to run by you guys is, you know, put it some of the on the note that I sent in, but man, about three and a half, four years ago, I was in a really bad place, uh, mentally, physically, and spiritually. I was sick. I couldn't figure out what was going on. I kept going to the doctor. Um, they sold that I was anemic. They put me on some iron transfusions. They didn't quite do it. They thought it was some bleeding from an ulcer. So we addressed that. I just kept getting sicker and sicker and the energy was getting worse and worse. I quit working out. I uh, couldn't make it to the gym. I just didn't have any energy. Uh, I got depressed and I was realized later that my uh, hemoglobin level was so low, I was barely functioning. I was hypoxic pretty much all the time and ended up in the ICU once. And they thought, well, we think it was just a 
you know, gastric ulcer. So they gave me some medicine for that, but didn't really fix anything. And then, you know, slowly and surely happened again. It's about two and a half years. I called the ER and went in and they found that my hemoglobin levels had fallen to a five. And I remember, um, you know, the surgeon sitting there looking at me and he said, you know, when you get below a seven, you could have irreversible brain damage. And this was a gradual thing. Did nobody notice? And I said, well, I don't know. I work for the government. They no one seemed to pay any attention whatsoever. And uh, he said, well, at least you have your sense of humor. And long story short, they went into it. And what happened there, too, is I got to spot where even just to fall asleep at night, I was starting to you know, use alcohol and drink too much. And just because I was such an, a bad place, not to justify that behavior, but that's what happened. Turns out, finally, they went in and realized that I had colon cancer. And what had been occurring is I'd been bleeding for about two years and just could not get that level back up. And then the um, the poor sleep, poor diet, you know, alcohol then exacerbated all of that. Uh, got that taken care of. It had not spread. It was not in my lymph nodes. They removed that section. And also then took the time when I was in the hospital to reach out and got some some help with some of the substance abuse issues that I was dealing with. In this case, it was alcohol, as well as starting to work with, you know, the therapist and then building my life back mentally, physically, and spiritually. So, I mean, I was at 1.357 pounds, um, a lot larger than I am now. Started to work out, got into diet and exercise, saw how important all of those were, that physical, the mental, and the spiritual every single day, and decided I wanted to help other people. So I became a certified personal trainer about two and a half years ago. And now I've been reaching out to the local um, uh, you know, uh, program we have here. They have a center for people in recovery for uh, alcohol or other types of um, you know, addictive substances. And I've been volunteering there and I'm trying to do is get my foot in the door to work for them and just help their clients on a volunteer and or paid basis to do some training. Couldn't quite get that to work out. Finally ended up working here at a local gym. But they were looking for somebody and I wanted to just kind of use these skills more and started training people there. And now as it works out that this recovery center has reached out to that gym and happened to work in that, we're going to start bringing out clients, it looks like. Nice. So my question guys is uh i'm gonna have about 12 people showing up at once you know in this van all in early recovery all different stages and i've, I've done a few of the group fitness classes i've taught a few of those and i oof, boy it's not my favorite thing to do but it gets my name out there which is good i'm able to look a lot of clients through that but what would you guys do if you got say 12 people showing up they got about an hour and a half two hours um and all different levels 19 year olds to 60 year old the different stages of their life but what I'm trying to do is instill this as a lifetime thing. You know, none of this, you know, 30 days you'll get ripped when you get out of recovery. Nothing like that. This isn't like, you know, a prison workout routine. This is these are some, some small things you can do, small changes to make for the rest of your life to make profound, you know, results. And any advice you guys have would be greatly appreciated. Yeah, man. Well, first off, uh, a tremendous story, uh, Matt. Yeah, God bless you, man. That's that's incredible. Now you're you're paying back by helping other people. So I love hearing stuff like that. Uh, when you're when you're working with a group, I think the wrong approach is to try to give them all a workout. I think that that tends to result in an inappropriate workout for a large section of the people because, like you said, you have a wide range of individuals in there from 19 to 60. So it'd be very diff di very difficult to give them like just this full workout. So I think the best approach, or I feel very strongly, the best approach would be to have a mobility component, which benefits everybody. And then it would be to teach them uh, to focus on one or two specific exercises and make that the whole the whole course. So in other words, today we're going to learn the barbell squat. And then you do a mobility session leading up to that. It might take 20, 30 minutes. And then you give everybody a squat variation that they can start with. So maybe the 19-year-old is getting into the bar and the 60-year-old is just doing a bodyweight squat. It's all the same biomechanics and you're watching everybody go through the squat and you're having everybody do the rep at the same time. And then you're pausing during the, the, the session and you're walking around correcting everybody's technique and form as they're doing it. So think of it more as instruction rather than the workout. Now the side effect is they're going to get somewhat of a workout while they do it as well, but I think they'll get much more benefit uh, from it that way. And then of course that also builds a nice community, which I think is going to benefit these individuals quite a bit because they're, they're in recovery. So hopefully they develop a relationship with each other uh, during this process. Yeah. You want them to walk away learning something and feeling something. And so that's why I, I would lean even harder into the mobility side of it. Cause not a lot of people even pay that much attention um, to, you know, getting into right positions, 
um, feeling what it feels like to be in optimal posture, um, to walk away after um, going through a good um, mobility session, they're going to feel like a million dollars. And this is just something that's going to kind of spark a conversation within them that they can do diff they can do fitness a little bit differently. Um, yeah, I, I do agree. There's, there's value in also like learning, like some of the, um, the compound movements and maybe taking one specifically like the squat, like uh, Sal was mentioning. Um, but you're, you're going to find, I don't know how much time you have with this, but I mean, an hour is going to go up really quick, just trying to teach them, uh, new moves mobility wise yeah. that they can benefit from with their hips, their shoulders, you know, uh, their ankles, like just focusing on those, like basically what Adam did in, in, uh, our webinar, I think would be a perfect, um, uh, way, way to handle that. Matt, did you see, we just had a live caller. Doug, did that go, did that air already? The, our, our friends with the podcasts on recovery addiction and, and they're from Florida. Uh, that may be going up today. Oh, wow. Uh, yeah. Okay. So we, we actually just had this question that two, two guys they actually are in the podcast space. We met them in person in Florida, a couple of real good dudes, both were, I think they're like 12 years recovering addicts themselves, and they've been felt compelled to now help others. They've built a podcast, and a lot of it's centered around health and fitness. And they were really asking us almost the exact same question of like what they were finding was, you know, putting these guys through these these workouts. They were seeing that they were trading their other addictions into their uh, into this fitness obsession, mm -hmm. and so they're yeah. they're just over intensifying the workouts, you know, not recovering properly, just beating themselves up. And they were justifying that behavior because they they've just traded the alcohol or drug addiction for now this fitness addiction. And they're asking us like how to prevent that, you know, or what would you guys do? So very similar. And and the and all of us are going to saying this kind of the same thing because we kind of worked this out on air with them and talked about some of the challenges with what you do. And, and I agree with what the, both guys are saying is like that's what you got to be cautious of is that you you don't want to turn it into this boot camp military prison style type workout because those guys or girls will take it to the extreme. And there's a lot, there's so much to learn about the squat, the deadlift, the overhead press. In fact, I would, I would literally take from us the content that we've already provided for free out there. Justin brought up the webinar that I did on prime pro that that's a 50 minute workout right there. It's like, mm -hmm. and by the way, I don't know if you know the evolution of that or how that the origin of that, but the origin of that, because you brought up the boot. So I used to run boot camps all over the Bay Area, and I had this moment, and it was after a few years of doing it, where I just felt guilty because I knew better. I knew what was better for these clients, and I had the average age was probably somewhere between 55 and 60 in this class, and I was doing all this circuit training stuff. And when I looked at most of them, sure, we had moments of losing 15 pounds here or there, but at the end of the day, they all look kind of looked the same, moved the same, same issues. Yet they were staying with me for years. And I'm like, am I really helping these these people out? And after I moved on past the boot camps, uh, this this guilt was still weighing on me. So I offered up these free classes on Saturday, totally free for anybody who took my boot camps. And I would teach that mobility class. And what I found was those people in that 50 minutes, I could impact them right away. Like they would get up. I, and I used to do this at the beginning of the class. I would have them cold, no warm up, no stretch, no, do 20 body weight squats just so they could feel and, and, and see their movement. And then I would take them through this mobility class. And then at the end, I would have them do the 20 squat body weight squats again. So they could really like, whoa, I can get down further. Oh, my back doesn't hurt. And oh my God, I just, they, they would feel what, what that was doing or what it was providing for them. And so I love giving a class something like that. And then I also love the idea of okay, this you know next four weeks of meeting together, we're gonna we're gonna learn all things the squat, all the different variations, the progressions, the regressions of it, the common deviations of the knees collapsing in to the heels rising to the chest falling forward to the arms falling forward. Why? Why does this happen? And then how important? Why is the squat so important and fundamental? And I would literally go through our YouTube channel and our podcast. And search or use the AI and search for all the things like you know we've done a master class on the squat we've done a master class on the, on the, uh, both on a, a recorded podcast and then we've done YouTube videos we've had all kinds of uh, brilliant uh, professionals that are even better than we are at what we do come in and teach the squat and I would take little nuggets from all of them and then put together your own kind of like you know philosophy or teaching and that's kind of how I would approach a class like that that's so diverse that I know deep down. 
just running them through a bunch of exercises randomly in an hour is really not doing them that great a service other than just keeping them busy and burning calories. Yeah. You, do you have, I, uh, do you have maps prime pro Matt? I don't have prime pro. Um, I have pretty much most of all the other programs, but I, I did watch of course the, the, the webinar Adam and I, I kind of used that when I was teaching that class, I called it resistance training with me or Introduction to training with resistance band, but half of it was using those movements you showed in that webinar. Love it. And it was really cool. When I was teaching that one night, over half the people that were taking it were in recovery that I had reached out to and said, I'm going to start working formally with you guys. But for now, and so there was about eight or people in there in the recovery. And someone actually at the end of the program got up who was not from the recovery program community, just one of the members of the gym. And she went out and she sat down and had a cardiac episode. And uh, they came in, ran and got me. I went out there. She was in the locker room at that point. Some people from uh, my class that were in recovery went into the locker room. Let everyone know there was a guy coming in and helps, you know, got everybody out. Someone else came in and got a 911 and called and we got EMS there. And I was able with my background, able to, you know, take vital signs and reassure her. I remember I asked her in like four questions. If these are in order of most importance, number one is what have you had to eat today? Did you have any medication? Do you have any allergies? And the last question, most important, How'd you like the class? And she, she just laughed. <laughs> so she, she calmed down and her respiration slowed down. But the reason I told you that was neat is I'm standing out there in the hallway with like seven or eight people in the recovery program. And they all looked around and said, holy cow, do you realize that instead of, you know, pulling from society, being in trouble, having the police come for us, we're actually responding and helping someone else in need. Wow. We're the ones who the police station called 911. And then when they came in the door, we were happy to see them. And that was really neat to watch them be of service. And so I think two things. One is I would definitely do the mobility aspect. I love the aspect of concentrating one compound movement and kind of building from there. And when they get done, they want to reach out. And I think maybe the additional thing would be how can they be of service to others? Maybe how they can teach this to the next people awesome. in recovery. And I hadn't thought about that until I just, you know, brought that up about the mobility training aspect. Now they were able to take that and be of service to the community instead of being the opposite, which is pretty neat. That's awesome. Seems. Yeah. I love Matt, that. we'll send That's you great. We're going to send you maps prime pro because the mobility movements in there, I think you'll be able to, to, to gain a lot of value from for this class. We'll send that to you. I, and, and just, you just, Building on what you just said, I love this idea. And maybe you come up with a catchy name or philosophy around the course of like, you know, you, let's, you know, let's learn this so we could teach someone else. Like, it, like that's, I, I'm already like putting together like how my, my first opening state or conversation would be was like, I would first sell the idea on how impactful a, a full, full range of motion body weight squat is to like just functionality and the importance of it, the benefits of it, and then the benefits of being able to get to a point where we can load it and build strength and then selling them on this idea of like, I'm going to give you guys the tools to not only do that yourselves, but then also be able to help yeah. others in your family figure out why they can't do that. And I love that. I think yeah. that's such Become a cool- resilient and pass it on. Yeah, yeah. I think that's such a cool, valuable thing that you could teach the class. They're going to get, they're going to build strength while doing it. You're going to address mobility issues. And then hopefully you give them enough education around movement patterns and why they couldn't do that. They can go then pass it on to somebody else and, and then be fulfilled. I think that's amazing. Yeah, and on the recovery community, they use the real short expression of, you know, clean house and address your internal issues first. Mm -hmm. um, trust God, higher power to them, there than us, and help others. Those are the three pins of uh, any good recovery program. And that's exactly what this would be offering it to do. Love that. So, that's great, man. Well, thanks, man. Thanks for calling yeah. in. We'll send you Prime Pro. Yeah, I love I love to hear awesome. I'd love to hear from yeah, it. Doing I, awesome work, man. As, uh, as you go through it, I'd love for you to circle back and keep us posted. Will do. All Thank right, you, man. guys. Thank thanks, you. Matt. You know, that's why I love trainers so much is a lot of trainers become trainers because they, 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 they want to help others. They see the value of what it did for them. Then they want to help others. And he's going to be so effective. Uh, oh, yeah. because it's going to be powerful, especially with the people he's, he's reaching out to. I mean, sure. incredible. Yeah. I, I just, we've talked about this a couple of times now about group training and stuff like that. And I love this idea of I mean, it's cool. I've actually got to see this, and I don't know if you guys have experienced this with the wives or uh, close friends or what like that. But you know, g getting getting Katrina to train, uh, you know, strength train properly the right way was a was a, a major thing in our relationship. Like she was an athlete, but she never trained like really properly. Yeah. Like she trained like a, a lot of the cliche ways that old athletic trainers would train clients. And so breaking that down and teaching her and then and then really improving her squat and her deadlift, it's, it's really cool to watch her turn around and do that to her friends oh, yeah. and help them and stuff like that. And so 
I think that idea of like t making this class about that is like, man, we can re uh, the impact that you can make getting the average person to go from either not being able to squat or not being able to squat properly to learning how to to squat mm -hmm. with really good mm -hmm. form and technique. That is so valuable in itself. Of course. That mm -hmm. you can make a massive impact by just really learning all the nuances of that and helping others do that. Yeah, it's kind of ironic. It's like going through recovery, but also learning how to recover properly. Sure. Love it. Our next caller is Donald from Missouri. Donald, what's up, man? How can we help hey you? Hey, guys. Yeah, how's dude? it going? Good. What's going on, man? Good. Hey, I want to try not to show my fanboy here because I'm just, I'm, I'm pretty nervous. And uh, if you guys are cool with it, I'll just dive right in. Do yeah, it. do it. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. All right. So, uh, first of all, I just, you know, thank you guys. Thank you for providing uh, such wonderful information and cutting through the fitness spaces, marketing BS, and giving the general public like myself actionable ways to improve their fitness and health. You changed my life. You've changed countless others. And I'm proud to be part of the resistance training revolution. And I just can't thank you enough. Um, that being said, I'm going to read my email verbatim because I promised my fiance, hi, Rachel, uh, that I wouldn't ramble on and make bad jokes. And this is the best way to keep me from doing that. Yeah, you got it. <laughs> I love bad so, jokes. Come on. <laughs> all right. Dear Team My Bum, I hope this message finds you well. My name is Donnie, a 40-year-old male who embarked on a lifting journey about a year and a half ago. Despite the challenges posed by my pigeon breast condition, which makes, it my, makes chest muscle development particularly difficult for me, I remain dedicated to improving my physical health and strength. After discovering I had a testosterone deficiency, I started TRT therapy three months ago, with significant, which significantly boosted my energy levels alongside prioritizing sleep and protein intake. I've seen a dramatic change in my body composition, thanks in large part to your RGB bundle. Currently, I'm in phase two of matched symmetry and thoroughly enjoying it. <laughs> However, my chest development remains a stubborn issue. Despite utilizing fo focus sessions and chest mods, progress is slow. This brings me to my burning questions. Is my pigeon breast condition severely limiting my ability to grow my chest muscles? Could this also be affecting my performance in other lifts? If so, which ones are most likely to be impacted? Your insights and advice would be invaluable to me as I navigate these challenges. Sincerely, Flat Chest Cheatham, a.k.a. Donnie, a.k.a. Iron Don Solo. <laughs> uh, looking at your picture. Uh, first of all, you look really good. Yeah, bro. yeah great, <laughs> uh, So you don't have, I mean, okay, so uh, the technical term is, what, is it pectus ca cavernitum or something like that, right, for pigeon? Mm -hmm. You've been officially diagnosed? Uh, yes, when I was younger. And I didn't really know much of anything about it. I just knew I was embarrassed to take my shirt off. And then okay. that's all I really had. Well, I'm, I'm looking at your picture. It doesn't seem too bad because sometimes what will happen with this condition, if it's really bad, is it'll impact your ability to expand your diaphragm. It can cause fatigue and stuff like that. That doesn't seem to be an issue for you? That is not an issue for me. No, yeah. it's more, um, I just feel like I, and I know that chest is a lagging muscle part for a lot of people, um, but it's always felt like it's just been extremely difficult. Everything else seems to want to want to grow and my body composition composition changed so rapidly in this time frame that I've uh, kind of been running the, you know, the RGB bundle and everything, but that, that part of me just doesn't seem to want to, want to progress. Bro, you're, you're so tripping. You're, 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 you're tripping. Here, I'm not sure. You're, you're tripping, bro. You seem pretty it's balanced yeah, based yeah, on no, your picture. Your chest is bigger than <laughs> Sal's. I mean, this is, you're doing, you're doing, you're doing <laughs> just fine. <laughs> <laughs> you're doing just fine, bro. This is, uh, now how long have you been lifting for consistently? Obviously you've been lifting for a while. I can tell. So how long? So, um, actually I, so I, I was at 240 pounds and I started with like cardio until I found you guys and on the December 1st of 2022, I started actually lifting, not using like a oh, hitch app on my phone. Bro, and this is all recent? Wow. Dude, you're, you're, okay, yeah, you're listen. So I, at one point, not only did I have like a bird concave looking chest, I was also imbalanced where one side was more developed than the other. And when I was working out for the first three or four years of my life, my chest wasn't even even. It was an absolute mess. Now it's one of my favorite body parts, or my wife's favorite body parts on me, but it took a decade of working towards that. It's just, we build muscle slow. If it's a challenging area, it's going to take you a little bit longer. I can tell you right now, though, by where your physique is right now, you're- You look, you look pretty balanced. You look yeah. really good. I, I don't see any asymmetry. No, no, it doesn't no. look like you're unbalanced. You're, I mean, the, the the old rules of prioritizing a body part would apply here. So, you know, train it first in your sessions, focus on the connection. If you feel like your delts, you know, take over, typically people with issues with chest development, mm -hmm. when they do pressing, their, their shoulders and triceps tend to take over. So when you press, try to focus on the on the chest muscles. Take volume away from strong body parts and move it towards the chest. Train with frequency. 
Uh, I mean, just those old rules. But I mean, you, you just started lifting, yeah. and you're, you're, you look pretty balanced. With I, rubber bands. I don't. I think you're fine. I, I know you. I know you want those answers from Sal, but I'm going to give you the answer that you really need to hear, which is like this is just this is part of it. We all have insecurities about our physiques. Okay. We all, the reason why when I threw that jab at Sal, it still burned a little bit inside of him because that's like, <laughs> that, you know, because that, that still, that hurts. You know what I'm saying? That's a, that's a, that's a deep rooted insecurity that, get you back. No, man. for sure. I'll get it. It's I know it. But I mean, it, 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 speak up though. Is it not true? Is it true or not true? <laughs> Every, of course. Yeah. We, of all, course. we all, we all yeah, have yeah. it. Okay. We all, we all I have, have bony shoulders. Anymore, dude. And I don't, I don't think, I don't think you could build a, a good enough physique to it completely go away. No. It, 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 it'll always kind of be there until you work on that, until you work on accepting your physique and loving your physique for the way that you're in great shape. I bet you your wife never says shit. Yeah. I bet you she never yeah. say nothing about you. Besides, right? don't tell bad jokes. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, 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 yeah. She, she ain't saying nothing about your chest. You know what I'm saying? And no yeah, would, yeah. nor would any other girl that you took your shirt off. I can't. Well, she got a diagnosis, right? And and like that's just something that kind of stays there. I'm sure. Yeah, but know? I can't even tell if if I tr if if you were my client, I wouldn't be able to see that you had uh, that condition because it looks like yeah you were you able to expand tell, your your rib cage out pretty well. So it you know because that's something we're aware of as trainers. If you see that. And it's and it's significant. Then there are some considerations, but I wouldn't even be able to notice uh, by looking at y your picture. Yeah, I mean, Sal gave tips to keep you know to keep growing the chest in the way. Another thing to pay attention to it. is uh, a, a lot of guys when they when they bench, um, they let the shoulders roll forward a little bit, and the shoulders and arms take a little bit more of the movement. Yeah. So being very aware of that, right? Staying that was an area. So that was my big problem was I had bad form. I, I just had bad form. I was allowing my right shoulder to roll forward every time I pressed, and so it just wasn't developing the same as the left. You focused and, a lot on the incline bench for a while. Yeah, so too, incline incline became one of my favorite because it kind of naturally rolls the shoulders back and down, and so that put me in a good natural position to lift. So yeah, uh, paying attention to your technique. I mean, I'm not training you, so I don't see your your bench pressing. So be critical of your form. Right? Don't don't sacrifice uh, your form to load the bar more because you're so desperate to build your chest more because that'll only work against you. Tech form technique yep. is so important yep. to engaging the chest, getting a good stretch in the chest, yeah. a lot of exercise, good stretch, full help. range of motion, mm -hmm. stay connected to it, squeeze at the end, open all the way up. Yep. Those, I mean, these are all tips to help. But at the mm -hmm. end of the day, you've only been <laughs> lifting consistently for a couple of years, and you look as good as you do. This is mostly a thing in your head than yeah, anything totally. else. I mean, you you look great, you're doing great, and you know we and we all have a muscle group that develops fast and then the other ones that develop slow. That's just part of us all being genetically unique. Like you probably, your arms probably explode when they just, you touch weights or your back. Like everybody has like an area where they feel like, man, I barely have to work that. And it, it responds well. And then I have the other area. It's like, God, it's so stubborn. I hit it so hard yeah. and it just doesn't go, but that's everybody. We all have it. And you got, you got to get out of your own head. Yeah, I appreciate that. I wonder too, and you know, this helps. I, I appreciate you guys meeting with me to discuss that because you you, you wonder, like, is it is it am I eating enough calories? Is it, is it my testosterone? Is that the issue? And no. I couldn't find any real good information. It's all muddied about how it actually affects you know the muscle development. So I thought you know this this helps a lot. I appreciate it. Yeah, yeah. no, yeah. You're, you're doing good, dude. You're yeah. doing good. Yeah. yeah, just follow the old principles of of prioritizing a body part, and you're you'll be you'll be set and stay consistent. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, that sounds great. I will. You got it, man. All Thanks right, for calling Thank in, brother. Right, Thank man. you. Adam's like, you know, we all have insecurities, so I'm going to highlight Sal. <laughs> <laughs> Just to give you an example. <laughs> like, yeah, it's, it's, oh, shit. I mean, it's true, though. Yeah, it's no, like, of course, everybody. Yeah, we, yeah. All, we all do. And, <laughs> and it's, uh, that's, just part of this, that's just part of this game, dude. And it's like, I mean, dude, he looks great. I will say this. With, with, with body parts that are lagging, what we tend to do in our training is we don't slow down and yeah. try to feel that muscle. Yeah, yeah. And when I do that, when I've done that, or now that I do that, now I see significant improvements. Whereas before, Dude. I was worried about the weight on the bar. I know. I love that. I love full range of motion, really like staying there and isometrically contracting to be able yeah. to feel it. Once you really get that connection, I yep. feel like now, uh, you know, going through the reps is a different yeah. experience. I got to see, dig through if I got some old pictures, but my I had a horrible chest. Yeah. Horrible. I mean, it was it was flat. It wasn't even. It was just, yeah. it was yeah. terrible. And I was weak. It was, all the above was bad. Mm -hmm. It just... 
it took a while and and that was a big part of it like my my insecurities around it drove my intensity in the training it versus yeah. slowing it down taking it through full range having to probably light because yep. i was already weak you know how embarrassing it is when you're a young man i can't even bench the, the big plates yeah and so actually and now you gotta slow down yeah left. so now i gotta take the weights down even lighter than it already is and go really slow like i mean that's all in your head but yeah. doing that is what built my chest well that's right? why i've always been on a perma bulk dude yeah <laughs> I mean, Trying to make I, me feel better. Look, yeah, here it is. No, <laughs> me too. I, I have bony ass uh, shoulders, dude. I'd never like to be like skinny. Yeah, you know? I was like always like uh, conscious of that. So yeah. well, I mean, we all got our shit. That's yeah. it. Yeah, I got a wife beater body. <laughs> <laughs> our next caller is Raphael from New York. Raphael, what's up, man? What up? How can what's I help up, you? guys? What's going on? How you doing? Hey, hey, man, this is. I'm like kind of like starstruck right now. Ah, uh, we ain't that cool. How's it? Everything good? We're yeah. good, dude. Good, man. We're How good. you doing? Hey, listen, there was a there was a poll going on in um Facebook about Who's team who? Did who ended up winning that one? Justin, of course he <laughs> of course won. Justin, did. it's exactly how I said it would end up. It was Justin was a <laughs> was, far first place. Sal and I were neck and neck for worst. Yeah. <laughs> oh man, yeah. oh man, that's all good. Yeah, it's all good. Yeah, yeah. Can't, I can't, I sandbag. Uh, can't win them all. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, all right. Well, currently I have a, like a little, little problem going on. Not a little problem, but I'm 30, I'm 40 years old. Um, I'm 5'10", according to my wife. I think I'm 5'11". <laughs> but, um, <laughs> Always cutting down. Um, I run around, I'm around 2, 208. Uh, as of this morning, I'm a 208 and I've been working around, out for five years now. Um, it's been like, I just feel like I just do not grow at all. I do not grow. I tried the the bulk. I tried the the cutting. I tried everything that you guys say do. I stick to it. And it's just like, I, I mean, I see some gains, but I just do not see what I was, thought I would see after five five years of working out. Um, I'm currently, I just hit a PR deadlift of um, 300. Um bench for four i i only could do about 175 and squat 175 also um i did hire uh an online coach from um the the mass forum and um can you shout him out yeah Go yeah do it. um alec gladwell from gw fitness he's a great great guy um i also got my testosterone tested which was at 386 ng dl whatever yeah. That, and um yeah and just i ran anabolics before i ran performance i ran um right now i'm running a map split okay. and I, I love split yeah i could hit the gym six days a week i work my whole my whole schedule around pretty much working out in the mornings and then i work nights so it works out for me and i get my seven eight hours of sleep but right. yeah i have i have i have a question for you Rafa, because Typically, my clients that would say something like this to me, right? Been training five years. I feel like I listen to what you say. I'm just not seeing the results. There's there tends to be two, one or two or both of these culprits. And so I want you to be honest with me and tell me which one you struggle the most with. It's either one, really consistent, meaning I never miss the gym and and I'm consistent all the time. I hit my workouts, or two. I'm really inconsistent with hitting my protein intake every single day. If you were to fail at one of them, which one is it? Um, I would say most likely the protein. I mean, I, I get my protein, my, my one grams of protein. Sometimes I think I over overreach. Um, but the gym, I do not miss the gym. That's like my sanctuary. <laughs> I love being in there. Yeah. Do you use a, do you use a, like a, my fitness pal or fat secret? Do you track, do you track your yeah, food? Yeah. I use, yeah. I use a, an app. Um, right now that's the thing. I don't know if I, as of now, like if I was to start over, I just don't know if I should like stay with the cut with a little cut or stay with a bulk or well, I just don't know what direction to go in. You started when did you start working with a coach? Um, I started working with him a couple of years back, but um, you know, I I left him because of um, you know, I just wanted to see if something was different, you yeah. know, like I wanted to see if I was like I wanted to push myself more, and I just I, I don't know, I just. I, I was just everywhere. I was everywhere so, and I was just trying to take advice and just see some 
some type of answers and I just seemed not to find it. So a testosterone, a total testosterone reading of 383 is, is, is uh, on the low end. In fact, you're almost uh, uh, under the range of what, what we'd be considered in range. Now, I don't know how long your testosterone has been at that, um, but there are some lifestyle factors that tend to contribute to that. One of them is overtraining. Uh, diet is the other one. Lack of sunlight or vitamin D deficiency would be another one. Or sleep, zinc. Sleep. Zinc deficiency. Sleep would be another one. Uh, a testosterone total of 383, you said? 386. Yeah. That'll make it hard to build muscle. That'll make it hard. You, you want to get your levels typically... You know, at least in the in the six hundred range, are you? Do you notice any other signs of low testosterone, like energy, libido, drive, motivation? Um, no, I actually have um good libido. I have good energy throughout the day. Um, my drive is, you know, I I I get my my eight hours of seven to eight hours of sleep, and that's why at first I thought it was the testosterone, but then it's just like I don't know, maybe it's my age, maybe it's just. Maybe it's just everything all together. So t usually it isn't testosterone, but if I see someone's testosterone in the 300s or lower, although you're not showing any of the symptoms, but typically I'll look there because that'll make it hard. Do you, do you know what your free testosterone was at by any chance? No, I just got like those regular like blood tests. I decided, hey, let me just, I didn't know there was so, when I heard you guys talk, I didn't know there was like so many different um, yeah. like levels of getting your testosterone tested and stuff like that. So yeah. Typically, uh, I mean, that's that's border. So like usually under 250 or 300, typically under 300 is out of range and you're almost there, right? Yeah. Um, so like the average healthy male at your age uh, typically would you'd want to be at least in the 600s. Um, so what I would look at are, 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 are anything in your life that could be contributing to that. So I would look at nutrient deficiencies. So zinc, vitamin D, those two things I would I would get tested. You can work okay. with a functional medicine practitioner to see if there's anything you could do to bring those levels up naturally. And in my experience, 80% uh, of the time, we could take someone's testosterone if they're measuring like that and double it uh, with, with lifestyle changes. Now, there is that other 20% where we don't, we're not able to really make an impact, in which case, and how old are you, Rafael? 40. I'm 40. Yeah, so you know, there's that other 20, 15 to 20%, in my experience, again, where then testosterone replacement therapy becomes uh, the the option. But there's a large percentage, majority, where you make lifestyle changes and then you see a huge boost um, in testosterone. And then that makes a big difference with your training. But I wouldn't follow a program like MAP Split. I know you like the gym, but that's such a high volume training program. I would have you follow a MAPS anabolic uh, mm -hmm. protocol um, or a MAPS 15 advanced protocol for now until you kind of okay. figure that until you kind of figure that out. All right. Yeah. Because the split, so, the volume on split is, I'll be honest, look, for me, that's a little too much volume. A lot. Yeah. And that, and I'm, I've been working out for years and I'm on TRT and split is a lot of volume for me. I'm going to, I'm going to have yeah, Doug, would be good. I'm going to have Doug give you maps 15. So you have that and then also put you in the forum. And Thank I, you. I'm on, yeah, I'm on the forum already, guys. Oh, you so. are? Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, man. I'm, I'm in there. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, and, and I'm I'm with Sal on you really trying to dial in all these things, other factors to see if we can get those levels up. I'm also, if you, if you check in for a month every week with your average calorie intake, so basically track every day your food on your whatever okay. app you're using, and then at the end of the week, you know, post in the forum, I averaged... 2,700 calories a day, 192 grams of protein, 130 grams of fat, 240 grams of carbs, whatever the numbers are. You post that for every week for a month. I think we'll have some really good idea between that and then trying to figure out the sleep thing and moving you to more like an anabolic or a MAPS-15. I think we'll we'll have some answers. Yeah, because split's going to be just too much. Too much volume for most people regardless. Mm. All right. Yeah. And yeah. and should I, should I stay like in a – in uh, my maintenance or should I go like under my maintenance or for now stay right I, around what yeah I would stay at maintenance yeah for now stay at maintenance Let's, that's why I want to I mm -hmm. want you just to kind of track eat when you're hungry make good food choices hit your protein intake that's the only real advice for food I want to give you know you what right Rafael now. go to mphormones.com you already have your blood test right so yeah. go in there fill out a form tell them we, we recommended you and talk to the doctors or, or the or the specialists over there because they are hormone specialists and see because there are interventions that they could also do that involve nutrients, 
but also involve medications that don't put you on TRT, but rather get the testosterone to come up naturally like and they HCG take you off. HCG or something. Yeah, like HCG and clomiphene, those types of things. Uh, okay. So go to mphormones.com, and you, since you already have your test, you'll be able to give it to them, and then they'll see if there's any of the tests they want to do with you. But the testosterone is a big one. Uh, when, you, when it starts to get down to that level, that's when you start to notice effects. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Typically. Yeah, kind of. I mean, I never... I never real I never felt what it was to have higher than that. So I don't I don't know what it is to feel. I, this they, this is normal to me what right. I feel now. Yeah. But um, when I hear you guys talk saying that you think that's normal and then you it rises up, then all of a sudden it's yeah it's like like what a what a game changer. That was Sal's like, story. That right? was me. That dude. was Sal's story. Yeah, and I was you, doing you I mean feel massive and, and I was doing everything you know working out, sleep, supplements, the whole deal. My levels were a little lower than yours, but it was in that range. I was below three hundred, but not but not too far from where you were. And the difference between, you know, where I was to where I, you know, now in, in, and how it affected my body is profound. It's absolutely profound, uh, in, in a difference because I went from low to high. Now there's a lot of guys who are kind of in the middle and they think that, you know, going on TRT is going to make this big difference. It won't, but if it's low, then it tends to make a big difference. But like you, Raphael, I didn't have an issue with libido. That's what I thought. That's why I was confused. But yeah. libido isn't necessarily always driven by testosterone, although it usually is. There's lots of other things that affect libido, but I will say this: when I went on TRT, I had my libido was like when I was 15 years old. So that's that that might be an issue. You might want to let your wife know ahead of time. <laughs> yeah, right. All right. <laughs> I hear that. Yeah. <laughs> She, she 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 hears it now. <laughs> yeah, so, that's <laughs> yeah, but go to mphormones.com and talk to them too. Yeah. You got it, man. And then we'll see. But, um, we'll see in the forum too. I, all right. Yep. Definitely. I definitely want to thank you guys for everything. I mean, absolutely everything. I long story short, pretty much I met I was never into fitness at all. And um, you know, like everybody else in COVID, you know, I got into it. I was really heavy. I was um I went I did it from 300, then dropped all the way to 230 something. And then when I got the um Alec, um the the personal online coach, he dropped me all the way down to 185 and then I went back up. And um, I just fell in love with fitness. I found That's you guys awesome. and I I just like I never listened to a podcast before in my life. And I found you guys on YouTube and I just don't not miss a day now. That's Thank awesome. you guys. Take my day. You guys make me laugh. <laughs> it is like Adam picking on on um, Dougie all the time. It's just, <laughs> <laughs> all the time. <laughs> it's just it makes my day. It makes my my life easier, man. I'll tell right. you that. Thanks. Right. I really appreciate you guys a lot. Thank you for everything you do. Thank, Thank you, man. Thank you Thanks for the support, Raphael. Yeah. Hey, yeah. we'll see you inside the forum, brother. Say hi to Don. Right, Tell Have a good one, man. Take yeah, it easy, man. guys. Yeah, Justin and yeah. Leonardo. Yeah. <laughs> God damn it. You know, um, I, I, yeah, three and three total depends what his free is too. Uh, t that's typically considered. Well, yeah, low. we just got more information right there that I didn't realize too. I mean, he's dropped a ton yeah. of weight, and that tends to happen when someone it goes can. on like a low mm -hmm. calorie diet for a really long time like that. That'll suppress testosterone too so yeah you know it might be as simple as just hopping on some hcg to, yep. to shoot it back up yep. so that is good advice to go that direction yep. i also want to see the diet i just of course you yeah. know uh it's i i think we it's especially it's a if you, component you take somebody who is who's done what he's done which is imp impressive right he was yep. what he was he lost a ton of weight probably cutting calories creating activity and it was probably results 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 and now he's come back the other way he's trying to build back up and now the progress is slow yeah. now you know, he's with the rest of us you, you know, know one <laughs> another yeah. thing that just just kind of off off shoot here is i think covid brought a lot of people to working out to fitness and health mm -hmm. the irony you know that whole period of time so many people are like, I started during that period of time. This is yeah. just one more person. So maybe it was a blessing. A lot more discuss. people conscious about that. No, that's for sure. Our next caller is he Ellen from South Carolina. Ellen, how are you? <laughs> What's up, guys? How hey. are you? Good. good how morning. can we help you? Um, good. Yeah. So actually, first, really quick. I know you guys hear it all the time, but you deserve to hear it every time. Um, I really appreciate all that y'all do for the fitness and health space. You've taught me a lot. I've been able to apply a lot of the things that I've learned from you um, with my clients, and you make me laugh. Uh, I learn a lot of very interesting things. Thanks, Justin. Um, <laughs> and I just, I really appreciate it. So, yeah, I can't thank you enough, uh, Doug included. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, you got it. So, I'll just dive into my question. I'm just going to read it, um, kind of how I sent it in. So, I've been in the fitness and nutrition space for the past 10 years. 
I started with a, biki a few bikini competitions at 18, um, and my passion for it led me to pursuing my nutrition degree. Since then, I've been coaching fitness classes, and then eventually I did transition to being a full-time nutrition coach after I graduated, and that was about four years ago. Um, so this is all I've really ever needed. I definitely struggled with disordered eating for a few years, both extremely underweight as well as some intense binge eating for a few years, but um, now about two years disorder free, which I'm pretty stoked about. Um, I absolutely love what I do and I feel very confident in my ability to coach clients on practicing balance and not let this be all consuming. Yet I struggle very much to practice what I preach. I've missed out on a lot of my 20s, and now that I'm 27, I really want to enjoy life without feeling like I need to control everything when it comes to nutrition and training. I've been working on this, but my biggest challenge is figuring out my identity outside of being the, quote, fit one. I tend to cancel plans because I'd rather hit my macros or I'll leave early from something because I know I'm working out early in the morning, etc. I've tried to stop tracking macros time and time again, but no matter what, um, as soon as I'm about to eat something, I whip out my food scale. I just don't trust myself. I know that this should be a part of my life, not my whole life. But because I've placed so much value on my physical appearance and desire to control for so long, I really struggle to just let go. I've not missed one of y'all's episodes in four years, and you're part of the reason I know that fitness and nutrition does not have to be your entire life. So the actual questions are... Do you guys have any tips for trying to break out of this box um, of being too attached to what makes me feel safe and in control? And then the second part is, have any of y'all ever struggled with your identity outside of fitness when that's all you know or may have convinced other people that that's just who you are? Great Hope question. That makes sense. Mm. Yeah, Great really question. good question. Really good question. Really common and very few mm -hmm. are willing to admit it. Yeah. So kudos to you for being there. That's half the battle, in my opinion, is to admit that you're challenged and you struggle with this i think 90 percent plus of our space is is uh littered with with fitness professionals that are struggling with this but then don't admit it mm -hmm. uh one of the things that has helped me personally in my journey through this uh was you and you already have attached it i was uh, in my head i was already an answering your question and you would already have made the attachment that uh, this is also attached to body image right like how i look so one of the things that moved me away from that, and I can totally relate to being judged by how I look and driving towards a goal like that, uh, was to become like the the mobility guy, you know, like like and because you love training, so I don't I don't want to uh, discourage you from lifting and exercising. It's a passion what you do, uh, but I would chase a new modality that's so outside of what you would normally do. So maybe you're already been a mobility person and you like so not that. So maybe. Be, like we have an old timey program, get into old time strength lifts. Or if you never trained for like a powerlifting meet, get into powerlifting movements for a while. Like if you've never trained like specifically for an athlete, check out the new performance advanced program that we have. Like pick something that is so out of the norm for you in that's related to health and fitness that is only going to benefit you as a trainer and coach, right? You you go chase a modality that you normally wouldn't do. It's only going to add more tools to your tool belt to help other people. Plus, it'll start to help you detach from the image part of fitness. Instead of always chasing the macros and the way your body looks, how about how you're moving or performing at, on an exercise or in the gym? That will help. It doesn't necessarily mean it's going to fix or change or get rid of, but it's a good way to start to transition away from that. And that's something that has really helped me with this exact same challenge. Yeah. Ellen, do you do you know what your triggers are with the with the the, the food and the and the workouts and stuff? With food, I think it's just my need for control. Mm -hmm. um, it's not even that I don't trust myself because I've been tracking for so long. Um, I, it's just that, yeah, I don't know. When it comes down time to eat, I just want to know exactly what I'm doing. Do um, with training, I don't really know. Do you uh, do you weigh yourself often? Every morning. Okay, so typically weighing. Uh, yourself looking in the mirror, full body and studying yourself or looking at your physique. Those two things tend to be really strong triggers uh, for people like you. So in order to kind of get out of this, you're going to have to eliminate those triggers for a while. It's going to be a little bit of a leap of faith because you're going to be, Oh my God, what's happening to myself? What am I doing? So I would take your scale and I would give it to somebody that you trust and say, I'm going to give this to you and don't give it back to me. 
And don't, so stop weighing yourself and stop looking in the mirror. Now, of course you have to look in the mirror. People are like, how do I not look in the mirror? Just look at the, your, your neck up when you're getting ready in the mirror. And if you look at how you're, how you're, how you look in an outfit, be very aware of how much you're studying yourself. So you can look at yourself. I look good. I'm out and stay literally. So I went through a period of this where I would, I, I took mirrors and I covered them and I stopped looking at myself because it would trigger those, uh, those behaviors. So the scale and the mirror, get rid of those, those two things. And then when it comes to eating, you're going to have to start connecting it to something else than how you look and, and your body weight. So what you, we're going to need to start doing is I want you to take a journal and I like paper and pen. I like this better than the phone because there's a lot of things on your phone that'll also probably trigger you like social media. So I'd like, yeah. I'd like for you to have a small journal and I want you to write, uh, talk about how you feel before you eat, what you're looking for from the food, how you feel while you're eating, and then how you feel after the food. And that's it. No judgment. Okay. So the, the, the point of this is also not to get into a shame spiral. Oh, crap. I totally ate what I normally eat because I'm still trying to control myself. Like, don't worry about that. Just how you feel, what's the goal with this meal, how I feel during, and how I feel after. And you're going to start doing, start connecting other things to food besides the way you look. Cause you'll, and it's going to take, it's going to be a bit of a process. In fact, it's going to feel very awkward at first. At first it's going to feel very forced before it becomes something very natural. On top of that, doing what Adam said, I think is, is great because you're still going to want to work out. I don't think you should stop working out, but I think you should go to the gym and start looking at, uh, the, like the weight on the bar. I think, I think a powerlifting program would be amazing for that. Cause then what you'll, you'll start to find appreciation and excitement and enjoyment over getting stronger. And also getting stronger typically means you're not under eating. It means you're probably feeding yourself properly and appropriately. So I like the strength aspect. So MAPS power lift, eliminate the triggers. And then the third piece, and this is the hard piece is, is, and maybe you've already done this work, but try to find the root of, as to why you feel like you need to control things so tightly. Typically it's because you had a childhood that was either no control, it fell out of control, unpredictable, um, or you didn't have any boundaries or because you're very anxious and that sense, that, that sense of control makes things feel more predictable. Um, but working with a therapist on that control issue is going to be very important because if, if you fix it here, it'll show up in other places. In other words, you may find that you're, Oh, I got the exercise and diet part down but now my house needs to be perfectly clean all the time, or I need to be like this with work or whatever. You're probably laughing because it might already be a thing. So I yeah. think working with a therapist on the control stuff and getting to the root will allow you to kind of figure out this thing. Cause otherwise it'll manifest in other ways. And then as you get older and you start to, you know, have a family and all that stuff, it'll get even more pressure makes these things come out more. So those three things I think will help a lot. Do you have, yeah, having a family is something that, um, it has made me think more about this. I, mm -hmm. I don't want this to rub off on any children. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. and then too, with the training aspect, I know, I know you guys don't like CrossFit, but for a while when I was doing it, it did help me kind of break out of it for a little. Cause I was so focused on performance. Of course. Mm -hmm. um, so that did help. Powerlifting. Yeah. Hey, that's an yep. example. That's an example, though. If you were a client of mine and we found that, that's a, another great example of where I would allow that. Like just because, just because we're not a fan of the programming, but when I had a very specific client who I'm trying to get away from body image, I think CrossFit did a pretty good job of that. It's kind of come full circle back. Not so good though, too. But I mean, for the most part, it's performance driven, and I like that aspect. And so there's some value to that. So I like all of the advice. Um, what I'm wondering is, do you have other interests and hobbies like outside of fitness? Are you like anything drives you outside that you enjoy that you could really dive into? You can, you know, maybe serve somewhere or like volunteer and give back to other people instead of like, I don't know. Sometimes for me, it's like, I'm so self-focused. I'm so self uh, motivated. Uh, and a lot of that's wrapped into, you know, my body training, like nutrition, like, wow, what, I'm getting all these things right. I'm checking all these boxes, you know, instead of pouring all of that on me all the time, like pour it somewhere else. Uh, yeah, for sure. That was part of my original, like, background in the question, too. I I think that's another piece that has upset me about all of this. I used to do a lot of different things. Um, I have a lot of hobbies 
drawing, dancing, um, even honestly, just hanging out with people in general is something like I was very outgoing. Um, and I've, yeah, it's become very, I guess, selfish, honestly, um, but all in pursuit of maintaining this one thing. So um, there's definitely things that I've thought about going back to, but I just, I just haven't. Uh, you know what? I'm so glad Justin asked that because that changes some of my advice now too. Um, and, and this just also reminds me a part of my journey where I started to get back into playing basketball. I started actually reading more. Mm -hmm. I started doing, I started, I picked up swimming. I started picking up some things I was interested in. And it's like, remember, and I know you know this because you've listened to the show for so long is that, you know, we talk about this, the whole health sphere and you just listed off a bunch of things about yourself that you liked and that you did that are a part of being healthy. Yeah. Like all those things you just said is like, great. those are all a part of health. And if you've completely eliminated all of them to just be so focused on this macros and body image, like that's not healthy. And so maybe part of your exercise is letting go of some of the gym days. Maybe you shouldn't train in the gym. Do this though, Ellen. Four days a week. Maybe it's two days a week. And yeah. then two days it is doing hobbies that you know give you joy. But you have to schedule mm -hmm. them at first. That's not going to happen naturally. I'm saying that because it's going to you're going to be gonna like be oh, alien right now. You know, yeah. Oh, I got to spend more time with friends or whatever. Like literally, like okay, Tuesdays. I am going to go out to lunch with a friend. Yeah, no, it's kind of look just whatever you were doing. If you were like Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Saturday, gym days, it's like to keep two of those days. And then the other two are now being yep. replaced with specific hobbies or things. It's going to feel very liberating. After a few weeks of doing this, you're going to start to feel free uh, from these chains that you're bound by. So, but you're going to have to schedule them at first. Like the journaling, it's going to feel awkward at first, for mm -hmm. sure. And and part of the and part of the things that should help you motivate through this, and, uh, and it, at least it did for me, is that because we're coaches and trainers, part of this work and experiment is so I'm going to be a better coach. Mm -hmm. Part of me going through this and the challenge of this and struggling through it is because it's only going to make me better for my clients. And so there's that, use that as your motivation as you go through it is like, hey, I know I'm not the only one who's challenged with this. Me going through it, wrestling with it, finding what works, what doesn't work is only going to make you a better communicator with your clients that struggle with the same thing. Totally. Yeah, I really appreciate that. You guys sound like my boyfriend. He tells me all the things you guys are telling me, but I told him unless Mind Pump tells me, I'm not going <laughs> to stay here. Oh, him. God, he probably hates us. <laughs> you know, no, we, we find, I find a way to get y'all in every conversation, I swear. Yeah, awesome. <laughs> We're just backing him up. Yeah, 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 I yeah. think, you know, yeah. I, you know, and I think I like Maps Anabolic for you. It's, you could follow the two-day version and then take the other days and schedule things that uh, that are not, related to fitness yeah literally sketch maybe take a class in drawing or a dance class like you said and 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 put that you know instill that in your life i think that's a great 100 yeah. percent. you have to do that that'd be great 100 percent. actually real quick i did do anabolic um maybe a year and a half ago and those um i guess there was a few trigger days or just train like you wouldn't do anything yeah that was hard but i forced myself to do it and it was really helpful however i just didn't replace it with anything so i just kind of did nothing on those days good um, yeah. maybe yeah this time around replacing it yeah dude Listen, yeah. I, I go two days a week and then go go sign up for something or do a class or schedule yeah. a lunch with a friend i love yeah. that yeah. yeah cool all right Alan. thank you back. so much for calling in yep Thank you guys so much for having me. Thank you got you. it. Thank you. Some good self-awareness and honesty. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, she's on the right path. Truth is, I think this is literally the whole space. It's just like, <laughs> yeah, it, dude. it is. Yeah. It really is. And you know what sucks about some, it? Some of them, some people choose to accept that and own it and work towards it. Others deny it. And I think some people don't want to let it go. Like they, they, they know it. Like you tell them like, yeah, I know. Well, I don't want to let this go. I mean, mm -hmm. hey, well, of course, you know how, you know how good, you know how good it felt to walk around as the most jacked dude in the gym yeah. and be complimented five times on the way yeah. in five times on the way out. Yeah. Like talk about an ego feed. So you get that fed to you. So it's like this self-fulfilling. Oh yeah. You look so good. Oh my God. You're so amazing. So it's like, you, it's an issue, but then yet you're being told how amazing yeah. you are for, of course, you know, of course. Yeah. Look, we have a hard gainer guide that can help even the hardest of gainers build muscle, and it's free. It's totally free, mindpumpfree.com. You can also find all of us on social media. Justin is at Mind Pump Justin. I'm at Mind Pump DeStefano, and Adam is at Mind Pump Adam. <laughs>